You are now entering the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. Welcome to episode number 75 of the History of Bad Ideas. I'm Jason. I'm Blake. And Mr. Jeff Now is not with us tonight. He's been ill for uh, three straight days, or so he says. I think he, uh, the recording from last week's episode where he pretended to be his evil twin brother. Jim. It took too much out of him. Either that or he got laid up with hookers and blow up in Origins, allegedly. Uh, you know, he's messing around with those Columbus hookers. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. We don't. We actually haven't heard from Jeff in a week, so I'm kind of worried about him. He probably has hepatitis C by now. Yeah, and chlamydia. Yes. Yes. And so. gonorrhea. But we have another Jeff in it. Oh, yes, that's right. Mr. Morris, Hello. film critic to the stars. <laughs> Vampire the killer. Stars. Yes. Vampire Vamp- killer. <laughs> Vampire killer. Yes. I'm not sure where that came from. Voodoo master. Voodoo master. Oh, I like that. Of course. Voodoo I like the voodoo master. Yes. Uh, we actually had a tweet today from one of our fans, uh, loyal fans, RJ Holt six six six, and uh, he wanted to know some good books to read. And he asked us, graphic novice, culture babble. I recommended your book, my yes. novel. Yes, your zombies and Titanic. Yes, um, you can find it in a nonfiction because Jeff proved that the, the Titanic. Sinking was actually caused by zombies and not an iceberg. It's a massive cover up. Yes. And what's it called, Jeff? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> zombies, the true story of the Titanic disaster. It's your own book and you forgot. <laughs> I was throwing you a leaf there. Well, I, uh, I, I keep I throwing know. him off. <laughs> He's like, you're being nice to me. I'm throwing you promos. Well, I tried to make the title something that people would remember and would clearly define what the subject matter was. You just forgot, though. That's but okay. It was kind of wordy and... So, it's all right, Randall. So, uh, I did recommend that. And he did say that he was going to look at it because he likes scary books and horror books. You can get it on Amazon.com. Yes. Amazon. It is actually good. It's actually a good I, novel. I, I, <laughs> and, I, and I have not run into somebody who's actually read it, except for, like, friends of mine. Who okay. Can't say one way Should, or another. Do you I, think that you'll get a Hobie bump in the sales after talking about it tonight? I don't know. We'll see. I hope so. I I've hope read so. the synopsis, and I like it. I give it five stars. See? Blake likes it yeah. right off the bat. It's it's I, an excellent synopsis. I wrote that synopsis. Oh, <laughs> did you write the book? I did write okay, the book. Okay, that's well. good. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote the synopsis. That's all the book is. The rest of it. He, he had a ghost author. <laughs> it's not even that. The rest is just blank pages. You get to fill in your own stories. <laughs> Pictures. <laughs> Picture. Picture Col- pages. Color, color. You have to color. <laughs> Connect the dots. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. But Randall Holt said he was going to look at. Do you have any books for him to read? Any suggestions? He likes scary books. Uh, He's he said he's all over the map. He doesn't mind. He reads everything, um, like horror books or you know anything. So is it just like horror books, like uh, comic books, novels? Doesn't matter. Suspense. (laughs) <laughs> Probably the best book I've ever read is uh, Devil in the White City. It's a nonfiction book, mm-hmm. but it's about uh, Chicago World's Fair, but at the same time there was a serial killer that was killing okay. people who were coming in, and it's like the dichotomy of those two, and it just works perfectly. And It's, it's nonfiction? It's nonfiction, yeah. Oh. Um, kind of like if it was Jack the Ripper but in Chicago during the London Olympics. But it reads kind of like fiction. It's the... Um, oh, I forget of. the guy's name. But he's in my Chicago book. Uh, the most one of those historical reenactments. Oh, is this the guy that was sending them to the basement or whatever? It, the murder castle yeah. of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that was really good. Um, 
Uh, American Psycho is actually a really good book. The movie does not do it justice. Did you like the movie? I I thought the movie was good, but um, the it had no the zombies book is in it. No. Right. phenomenal. They go on pages and pages about how how Genesis was so much better before Phil Collins took over at the helm. And that's and, in the book. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> okay. it's pages and pages, and you know how he just kind of glazes over it in the in the movie he ta- he's like mm-hmm. telling his murder victim or whatever about how this was much better before when uh when peter gabriel was singing but now that phil collins got this new but it, he goes pages and pages and it's just this, this stream of, it's a very good book um i really like the um um oh, i forget i forget now i'm not gonna <laughs> well i did uh recommend the stand uh, that which is not the book, uh, the Stephen King book, obviously, but mm-hmm. also they made a comic book series out of it, and they have uh, I think there's Mister Trips. Uh, that section has like six issues, and then they go into the next section of the stand that has six or eight issues. Uh, very well done. Uh, I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, I think I got the Mister Trips. I got one other one. I think they have three or four. Uh, but that's actually really fun. I thought, okay, I've seen The Stand. I've seen the miniseries. You know, I love the miniseries, which Gary Sinise. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to be anything different. It's very similar, but it's fun to see it in the comic book form. So I recommended that one. Blake, you got anything? Any books? Uh, books? Well, I could probably rattle 20. Okay. Off. Can you do two? <laughs> two. I don't know. What kind of genre did he want? Suspense. You know, but he said he's open to everything. I, I Romantic rec- comedy. Romantic oh, comedy. Yeah, romantic 13 comedy. going on 30, the book. Go. Great, <laughs> great book. Uh, never saw the ending coming. Oh, she ended up with him. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, I recommended also Stephen, Steve Martin's uh, Born Standing Up. Um, his, uh, yeah, his biography. Biography. Autobiography is actually pretty good. Have you read not. it? I've seen a documentary about it, but I have not read it. My wife got that for me if for I Christmas it, years ago. I would read I would Read it, yes. Yeah. So if if you would like it, I have it. I'll let you borrow it. All right, well, yeah, give it to me at the end of the night. Okay, uh, so that I recommend that one. But you got anything, Blake? Anything? Uh, Putting you on the spot? Got so many. Give me one. Choose your adventure. Choose your adventure. There you go. The Maybe Black Knight one. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Randall. I hope you like it. Uh, so, Morris is going to sit with us tonight. I'm in charge of the technology, so I apologize for any screw-ups. Uh, usually Jeff now is the IT guy, so uh, we'll go with that. Blake, you got any stories? Any story uh, time? Do you really have a Choose Your Own Adventure book? Because I'd like to read one of those again. I do not. Uh. I do not. I think my brother does. And one of my brothers. Art print signed by uh, Elmore, because he did the covers for those D&D Choose Your Own Adventure books. Really? There's yeah. D&D of it, Choose Your Own Adventure? Yeah, plenty of them. Oh, I didn't know that. Lots of Elmore them. Elmore Leonard did that? Yeah, no, Larry Elmore. Uh. Yeah. Samsonite, you were way off. <laughs> Samsonite. Well, you know, I had an elm. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, do, I do remember some of them. I think there was like a hundred, over a hundred of them, of uh, those Choose Your Own Adventure ones. I just remembered uh, doing a lot I of cheating. In the fourth grade. I just remember doing a lot of cheating. I'd like, okay, I put my finger oh, in where the decision maker that. is, and I go to like, okay, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Well, it's always the most illogical, too. It's like, would you like to save the princess or jump into the pit of snakes? Oh, I'll go save the princess. There's a You're crocodile. Dead. You're dead. Exactly. If you jumped into the snake of pit, the pit of snakes, it was yeah. just a mirage. That's right. <laughs> There's nothing there at all. <laughs> yes. Is that format copyrighted? Like, can I do a zombie book, Choose Your Own Adventure? I don't know. I don't know if it is. is. T- Titanic Zombies? I think choose the name adventure. is probably copyrighted, Choose Your Own Adventure, oh, but I don't think the form. I don't know if the format could be. Cause you could, that'd be I mean, great. You actually make that. Uh, you can tie that into your current uh, true there's Titanic gotta, story. There's got to be a, a book about that, right? Yeah. I mean, you got a zombie choose your own adventure. There's got to be, right? If not, Morris trademark it. Yeah. I, I hereby copyright that idea. TM. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you have to do? <laughs> if you come up with the idea first, you got the copyright. And if it's I in, think, on I air, think you actually have to yell dibs. Dibs. <laughs> There you go. I dipped it. Ha ha, I'll sell it to you. just lost it. Sorry. <laughs> Jason's got it. You're going to have to pay him for the rights now. Uh, I'd like to read his co- his version. <laughs> you no, died. <laughs> the end. That was it. No, he's just going to own the rights. You yes. You still buy it from him and write it. He ain't going to write it's shit. It's kind of like people that just get website names and they just keep them. They don't exactly. want to. <laughs> you just register them and keep yeah. them and hope they, you know, the uh, celeb will buy it from you. Yes. Oil by time. dibs again. Did Oil you see Taylor dibs. Swift went on a spending spe- spree of all the porn sites with her name, like Taylor Swift XX dot XXX, and like all these other ones? Like, I think uh, they said like 
in your ass Taylor Swift.com. They, they, she bought it. Like anything that could be porn related, she bought just to protect her name. So, did you run across this looking up Taylor Swift stuff or looking up porn stuff? I don't think it matters to you, Jeff. It's my personal <laughs> taste. Because <laughs> I'm not sure which one would be better there. I hate Taylor Swift. I'll be honest. I can't stand her. I can't stand her. So, Blake, any good stories from the weekend? No. I downloaded Waze today. What? Waze. What's that? W A Z E. Wazi? used to have that. Yeah, Waze. Is that the traffic thing? Yeah, it's a yes. social media traffic Google map kind of thing. Yeah. That Google actually bought it. Yeah. Do you I'll, like it? I don't understand why there's all these basketballs all over my screen. What's <laughs> up with that shit? Those are, car- those are smiley faces. No, they're basketballs. Are you being serious? Yes. And there's no basketball courts there when I drive by. Are you sure? I damn well guarantee it. Did LeBron copyright it? <laughs> just don't remember. Just remember. Did the NBA? Does the NBA? You know what? Own I it? did join the Cleveland Cavaliers Ways team. I wonder if I drive on that road over the basketballs, the Cavaliers get points. Well, I hope you don't choke, like they're going to. <laughs> damn you, sir. Yeah, I'm just damn saying. You. Everybody's getting injured or quitting. Man, I tell you, LeBron is a beast, man. Uh, you he know. Is a Beast. I'll He's be honest, the best basketball player ever. I saw the ads, and I don't watch NBA at all, but I was actually intrigued to watch it. And it's on tonight while we're, fil- we're recording. Yeah. Oh, you know, in the NBA Finals, you don't say, oh, one player can beat an entire team of all-stars, but uh, that's what he did. That's what he did in yeah. game two. Yeah, he almost did it in game one. He almost did it in game one, too, except he had Kyrie Irving but helping pr- him out. The problem then, then is... He doesn't have Kyrie, doesn't have Love. I, I, he basically picked the team up, put it on his back, and offensively, he's it. I mean, he is it. So if they win the championship this year. It's LeBron James. It might as well just re- erase Golden State versus <laughs> Cleveland, but Golden State versus LeBron. Irvin was in one game. <laughs> half a game. Well, one, one game. And a half. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, so he has an out clause in, after two seasons, I think, just so he can renegotiate and get more money, basically. Yes. Do you think if he wins the championship this year, do you think he opts out? No. You think he stays in Cleveland for the rest of his career? No. The reason he came back is because he wants his son to go to St. Vincent, St. Mary. That's okay. where he went to school. Outside okay. of um, Cleveland, Ac- Akron area. Akron area, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I hope he stays. I have no issue with them. No, I hope he does too. I and, mean, and after that, he gets the monkey off his back and just be a regular dude. I do like how everybody, when he left, I'm burning his jersey. Can I have it back now? <laughs> you know, but everybody knew it was coming. Yeah. I mean, they gave him shit to play with in Cleveland. Well, look at Albert Pujols in St. Louis. When he mm. left, they were all bitching about it. And yeah. it's like, that was the best thing that he could have done for St. Louis's leave. Because you don't have $200 million, you know, contracted yeah, to him. St. Louis he's 41 is a years well-managed old. baseball team. I agree. There's a big I difference. I do agree. <laughs> between... You know, the Cleveland Cavaliers and, you know, what was that Duke Flunky? I can't remember his name. <laughs> Christian Leitner? Christian, no, not Christian Leitner. The other guy. Uh, I thought you were going to make a comparison to the Reds know, being well managed. Whatever. No. We got Marlon Bird. There you go. Uh, hey. And, Morris, you're going to Chicago to see the Reds play. Is that on purpose? Instead of, like, going downtown to see the yes. Reds play, you're going to go to Chicago to see I... them play. I am a not a Fairweather fan. I'm not a Fairweather fan, too, but they're tough to watch. They even look good couple games this week they won yesterday and they're winning tonight my stepdaughter sang the national anthem yesterday did she oh awesome. she did at the reds game at the reds game well congratulations i didn't know that along cool. with 20 other people in a choir but it still doesn't matter she was she on was there. there it was it was pretty wow awesome. look at that did you tell her to yell the loudest so everybody can hear uh, she was flipping she was everybody on, off while she, she was doing she it was look at the, me yeah, she was on the big video screen and she was like perfectly behind this slightly fatter person and you so couldn't see her at all could not see her at all like could see it looked like the the slightly fatter person had a shadow that you could just see like the like the three-dimensional the part, outline which yeah was, which was the my outline. stepdaughter behind her <laughs> she's waving a jump up and down look at me look at me okay so uh i do want to sh- uh, send a shout out to brett uh, and I'm going to mess up his name. Ren, I think it's your, uh, Hurin, Hurin. He's British. Uh, for Torso Bear, I was talking about it last week. Hey. Morris, you might like this, too. Uh, you probably didn't listen last week. It's okay, ah, Morris. that cheeky monkey. The cheeky monkey, Brett. Uh, basically, he wrote this graphic novel, and it was uh, all these smaller stories connected to a bigger story. And it's about these toys. It's like basically Toy Story, but dark. And uh, the one, the main bear 
uh, the main ca- uh, toy in it is a cop, and he's investigating crimes in Toyland. And in the second book that they're kickstarting now, which I'll get to in later on in Hidden Gems, uh, he gets framed and goes to this prison for toys. But it's a really dark one, and I heard it on another podcast, Snake Oil Comics, and uh, I, they interviewed him, and I was really intrigued to get it. And uh, basically, uh, it was going to be Snake Oil couldn't do it over the phone, or they couldn't, you know, take my credit card and send it because they're, their website's not adapt for it yet. So they're coming down in, since, to Cincinnati in September, so they're bringing me a copy. I'm paying for it. Get a tweet from Brett. Hey, really appreciate you giving me a shout out. Here's the digital review copy. He gave me an advanced review copy, so I'll be reading that this week. So I want to say thanks to Brett for that. I'm still buying the hard copy, but uh, I will have a review by next week. So awesome. uh, you would like that, I think. I do, I do like the idea. It, it is a very like a fascinating it's idea. It's dark. Um, and I love the title. <laughs> yeah, Torso Bear. All one word. Now, Torso Bear, was that the homicide victim? No, that's the main All guy. All was left was torso. The torso. But I think in this, uh, he was saying in the sequel that they're working on, they're trying to kickstart now. I actually kicks, uh, I actually paid for it today. First ever Kickstarter I did. Um, but anyways, um, the death penalty in it, it's not an electric chair, it's for toys. And for the bear, for the stuffed animals, they cut a hole in their back and they took a vacuum and they suck out all the stuffing. And he said it's very creepy to see like this bear just get deflated, and that's their death penalty in Toyland. Mm. I like that idea. It's I thought dark. it would be like a, a mean older sibling ripping the head off of a. See, I don't adult. know if there's adults or like real humans in it yet. I think it's all toys. I'm not sure though. I see, I haven't read it yet, but I'm very intrigued by. So it. is the jail just like a big giant baby's crib? I don't know. I don't know. He said it's in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. and so uh, I'll look at it on break to get the exact thing but i think you would like it i think you would like it more it does sound fast it doesn't it so i appreciate brett for uh sending it over send me the digital copy and uh we'll talk about this a little bit later on and last thing before uh we get into listener feedback uh we are now on wicked radio well that's really wicked it's a wicked clean wicked radio uh, the guys at Snake Oil have this uh, website, Wicked Radio, Wicked. and uh, so Google it, and we are on there along with many other ones. Is uh, Wicked? Is it like Wicked. Wicked Awesome from Boston? I think it is Wicked Awesome. They're from Michigan, but we're going to go with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but they got a lot of good ones uh, that not only Snake Oil and Dark Angels Pre Freaks, uh, along with uh, a couple other ones, but they do have a 365 Films uh, podcast and a couple other ones. So we are officially. Um, we're officially on another uh, website there. Now so. there's the uh, 365 Films podcast. Flicks, sorry. Flicks, 365 yeah. Flicks. Yeah, 365 now, Flicks. Now during leap year, do they have to change their name? I think they're 365 and a quarter is actually what their official title is. So that way they don't have to keep changing their name. I think that's what I, should, I would do if I were them. It's just accumulative. Is next year a leap year? I don't know. Is it? Morris, you're a smart one. Wait, it's 16. It could be. It's got to be it divisible is. by four. Oh, by four. Yes, pushing it is. Pushing my birthday back by a day. Because mm-hmm. I'm so close to the leap year. Damn it. So Just think of that. It's another day you don't get paid if you're on salary. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn salary. Okay, so listener <clears throat> feedback. Uh, Blake, start it off. Listener feedback from Doug. Number one fan. Can't it, die. Uh, can't. Shit. Give yourself a nickname. That's what it is. I was going to say, buy yourself a nickname. (laughs) I'm all goofy Andy. Can't give yourself a nickname. That's right. It was Morgan Freeman's birthday last week. Can you do the whole show doing an impression of him? Morgan Freeman. That's intriguing. Could we do it? I just tried doing one. Did you hear You didn't even make it through 30 seconds. What? (laughs) It was better than mine. Andy Dufresne. Oh, walked, Andy. He climbed through 500 yards of he shit and came out clean time. as a whistle. <laughs> as terrible as both of those were, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best meme I saw was a picture of Morgan Freeman and it said, like, happy birthday across the top. And at the bottom, said, bottom was, and you just heard that in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, that's true. That is true. Could you do a Tim Robbins impersonation, Morris? Is there, there? There, I just there it is. There, there it is. Yeah. Talks like any other white guy. That's right. <laughs> uh, you all well, know because Al Pacino and De Niro both have distinctive voices. Hua! That's all we got. 
And then I'm crazy. That's not even. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I was trying to do Pacino there for a second. I do love your impressions. Uh, Pacino in uh, what I was going to say, Devil Wears Prada. That's not right. Uh, <laughs> the Keanu Reeves one, Devil's Advocate. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, you're doing Scarface. I was doing Devil's okay. Advocate, which does no. not hold up well. Have you ever seen Devil's Advocate, Morris? Where Keanu Reeves is the yeah. Southern. Attorney, attorney, but his his impress or his uh, southern twang goes in and out like, oh baby, and then is the next one is I don't know. Does it depend on whether or not he's wearing sunglasses? Yes, yes, I think it does. Or if Charlize is in the uh, scene, he does have an impre- uh, impress. Uh, he does have a southern twang when she's in the scene. When she's not, she he doesn't. I don't get uh, so it. So he tries harder when she's. Yes, the, uh, yes. Is, is there a moment in the film where he goes, whoa? I don't think he does. Well, yep. you know what? I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Again, does, I thought it was a really good film when I Something's saw it. Something's afoot at the Circle K. It doesn't hold up. No. Do you think Bill and Ted's holds up? Well. You think it does, the movie? I don't know. Well. Well, I know your impression does. <laughs> Morris, what do you think? I, I haven't seen it since it reached the point where it may or may not have. So great. Like, I, I haven't seen it since maybe the 90s. Okay. I just remember Napoleon going down the water slide in that outfit. That's the only thing I re- one of the few things I remember. And it George Carlin. Like it would hold up. Yeah, is George Carlin in the second yes, one? Yes, I think so. He's I in both. He's in both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or he was dead, and they put his image. No, in the no, he wasn't dead because no, he was, was in uh, Jersey yet. Girl, and that came out way after oh. the second one. Yeah, he would have been in the second one too. I think Jersey Girl actually killed him. I think the yeah. Kevin Smith's Jersey Girl actually no, did. Actually, I think uh, it was his own bitterness and the you know and his feelings for the human race that killed him. He wasn't bitter. <laughs> Speaking George from as a bitter Carlin. man, I don't think he was bitter. <laughs> did you just insult Kevin Smith? I do like Kevin Smith, but <laughs> and you know what? Everybody makes fun for Jersey Girl. I actually like Jersey Girl. I own Jersey Girl. But you just said that it killed George Carlin. <laughs> wow, well, I was trying to make a joke. I wasn't. Being <laughs> Not like, only was it bad, but it killed one of the comedy <laughs> legends of our time. Yeah, really? <laughs> I was just trying. <laughs> I like Jersey Girl. The best part of it is I we previewed it. I gave it a standing ovation when J-Lo died. That was the best part of it. She died. There are so. much worse films than Jersey Girl. Yes, yes. But there are much better Kevin Smith Cop films. Out. But... <laughs> Cop Out was bad. <laughs> Anything with Tracy Morgan is bad. So, Okay, uh, your next play. Don't get too pregnant. Uh, of course, he just is rich now because of the Walmart settlement uh, yeah, for hitting his limo. He doesn't even remember the accident, so how could he sue somebody for it if he doesn't remember it? I want to know how much that uh, how much he got. A lot of money. He's a celebrity. He was in the back of the limousine with a couple other people. Nobody's wearing seatbelts, of course, because you would think, "Hey, I'm in a limo and I'm safe," which really isn't the case. You really should be belted up, but. How many, how many people, though? I've gone back of limos I've never belt up. And no. I know you should. You should. You should theory. be in the back. You should belt up in the back of a car, and I never belted do. belted up and drinking out of that champagne bottle. I'm rich, bitch. Do they I'm even rich. have seat belts in the back of limousines? In the sideways seats? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. On the That's a good poles? question. On the strip pole? Stripper pole? Yeah. I bet you they do on the stripper pole because they got to hold themselves up, I think. Oh, just like the little yeah. loops at the top. Uh, they put their for... heels in it and that? <laughs> I, I think so. Well, you could do that or you can wait until they take their bra off and strap yourself in with the bra. It's elastic. That's true. That's true. It'll give um, way. It yeah. won't hurt. Same thing with the G-string. So why was Tracy Morgan on the stripper pole is what I'm wondering when the accident occurred. He's trying to get them bitches pregnant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So good job, Tracy Morgan, for being rich. So... Exactly. Uh, go ahead, Blake. Next. He, uh, Doug would also like to know, will you be reviewing the Tony Awards? Did Morris make predictions? Jeff Morris, did you make some predictions for the Tony Awards? I didn't. I was going to try to be funny and look up who was going to win mm-hmm. and then make my predictions, but I have no idea what the categories mean or anything like that, so no. Okay. <laughs> I know they honored Tim Curry. He had a stroke. Did you Have you seen that? Tim Curry had a stroke? Yeah, I didn't realize that. And he, like, he looked bad. Like, he, you know, it, really? it affected him really bad. He, he was in a wheelchair. Uh, it was really sad to see. I mean, just because his body of work is amazing. And then to see what, you know, that he's having trouble talking and all that. So, But they did honor him uh, at the Tony Awards really? on Sunday. So Now, was it Tim Curry or was he in his... Uh, Frank and Wiener outfit? Frank and Wiener outfit. <laughs> I don't think he was in the Frank and Wiener outfit. He no. was actually in the... Uh, no, it's because Caitlyn Jenner was in the Frank and Wiener outfit. I... 
Uh, oh, okay, you can say Jenner because we're not talking about the K word, the other ones. That's right. His I'm not talking estranged about family. Yeah. We're not allowed talking about that family. Yeah. Um, no, I think he was in the Clue outfit, the Butler outfit, the Butler uniform. Oh, so that's what why. a beauty! Yeah, what? He was you never seen him it. do his "Oh, what a beauty" song. No, Saturday Night Live skit. No, um, Tim Curry. What to beauty must be four feet long, two feet long, or even more. Yeah, it's a. Uh, was he a interesting skit? Was he a host? Yeah. Oh, he was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. he's done SNL back okay. in the day. Okay. He was a great villain on a Criminal Minds episode, too. Tim Curry? Yeah. Okay. It was like, I, I had no idea that he was even in it, and I'm like, is that Tim Curry? Like, he he was much bigger than I remembered. And looked he, much, his he weight looked, fluctuates a lot. He looked rough, and he just made a great villain. And It seemed like just for a villain in a Criminal Minds episode, he put a lot more effort into it than a lot of the famous actors who, who happened to... I get. feel like he was on a sitcom, too. Like, he had his own guest... Uh, he had his own <clears throat> spot on a sitcom, like a guest vehicle... Try and figure out what it was. Alf. No, it was not Alf. <laughs> I will Google it here. <laughs> um, All right. But, okay, next. So if you're going to go ahead and Google it, I shall move on to the, uh, move on to the next uh, listener feedback. Yes. This uh, comes from uh, Lefty at Culture Babble. It says, uh, I want a nickname. Yes, because we're talking if people want a nickname, listeners... Uh, they can uh, ask us for nicknames. Now, hold on. Let's not insult our fans or Culture Babble. I didn't insult anybody. Yeah, I know, but I'm a little worried about it. Uh, what would you like to give Amy as a nickname? Please be nice. Uh, babbling Amy. Battling Amy? Okay. Okay. Why Amy is that? Because she always battles you? Amy Babble. I said Amy? Babble. Oh, I thought you said Babbling, babbling. Amy. Oh, Okay. Or Amy Babble, because she's at Culture... It's Amy at Culture Babble. So you're just going to give her Amy Babble? Amy Babble or Babble Amy. Okay. The Babylon? Or Amy... You know. Amy from Babylon? Amy from Babylon? Amy from Babble. Babble Amy on, from, get it? Like the old Babylon? Amy from Babylon? Yeah. We're yeah. going with that. Amy from Babylon. You got anything? Or something like that. Jeff? I, I don't know her well enough. I That's can't. okay. We, it's all right. It's all right. You just make whatever up you but want. But going from what you're saying, I think Babbles would be the... Babbles. I like that. Babbles. The, the I like it. She then. is no, Babbles. No, that would be misogynistic and sexist. <laughs> no, she's from the culture Babble. We're going Babbles. I like that. Just don't say Bubbles. <laughs> Uh, Over the Top from 1997 was Tim Curry's sitcom. Uh, No, 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 not the Sylvester Stallone uh, (laughs) uh, thing. Over the Top is an American sitcom starring Tim Curry, Annie Potts, and Steve Carell. Yeah. uh, What year? 1997. It premiered on ABC on October October 21st, 1997. Twelve episodes were produced. The series was canceled after only three episodes had aired. (laughs) Well, okay then. I don't know what it's about. Okay. I told you he was on a TV show. Nobody believes me. Uh, after be- I didn't. I didn't say I don't believe you. Yeah, I don't believe you. Here we go. I still don't believe after, you. After here's a synopsis. It's on the internet, so it must not be true. Synopsis. It's after being lies. fired from the soap <laughs> soap opera, days to remember. Down on his luck, self-centered actor Simon Ferguson moved into Manhattan's Metropolitan Hotel, which is run by his ex-wife Annie Potts. Oh, wacky hijinks ensues. Isn't this the same plot as Tootsie? No, he's not a woman in it. Well, no, he doesn't it's, cross it's dress in this that, movie. Besides that, it's he doesn't the cross same. dress in that one. Come on. He uh, was only married to Annie Potts in the show for 12 days 20 years ago. And she, with his charm, uh, she lets him live there, I guess. Oh, wow. Steve Carell charm. plays the uh-huh. psychotic Greek chef. Yorho <laughs> Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Thank you. Galifianakis. <laughs> That's Euro. who Steve... Yorgo. 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 Oh, that's a play on Euro. Y- Y-O-R-G-O. By Steve Carell. Euro. Wow. And he's a fan of As the soap opera. The food. John O'Hurley is the assistant manager. And Danny Strong, who I don't know who that is. So, there's your, uh... There's your little, uh... There's your Tim Curry fun facts. All right. Tim Curry Never awards. Again. I like... I like Tim Curry. <laughs> I don't think you would like over the top. I, I, I think I could I could stomach any 
any half hour span of Tim Curry. Okay. Okay. I think Ann, 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 Annie Potts falls in love with him is this supposed to be the, the thing of the show. Even though she's married and all that, so. Okay. I would not have sex with Tim Curry. Or Annie Potts. If she didn't talk. I don't know who Annie Potts is. You don't know who Annie speak. Potts is? What? If she didn't speak, maybe you could. <sighs> she was in that <laughs> show with Jay whatever from Cheers. I remember yeah. that. Anyways, go on. I'm not looking that one up. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. All right. Anyway, so Jordan D. Mertens at Hojo B1. Yes. He says, uh, what comics are you reading? Don't answer that question because it's rhetorical. Because he says, you should be reading non-player by... At Nate, at son, Nate of Simp. son of Simp. Yes. In the current Star Wars. Hashtag big recommend. The new Star Wars is beginning uh, really good reviews. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm intrigued by it. What's non-player? That sounds... I like that title. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, your job is to look that up, Morris. Look up non-player here. I would, but I'm going IT here. <laughs> and I can't do two things at one time. Yeah, see, we need Jeff for good nicknames and for IT direction. Yes. And for the production engineer. Uh, so this, pe- <laughs> this person that I've never run into before is going to hate me because I came up doesn't with doesn't matter. We've never ran into him either. He's a fan. No, I mean uh, Amy at Culture Valley. Oh, yeah, because of Babbles, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I can at least deflect. Deflect. <laughs> deflect. <laughs> likes you yes we like amy yeah. that's right. well that's we like we... amy i don't know if she likes us yeah, but that's why we tease her so much <laughs> that's right uh i did i did recommend the stand uh i've not read any comics recently because i'm kind of waiting for marvel's secret wars and dc's convergence to stop so when they reboot i'm not stuck in the middle uh again i have mentioned many times i do like batman and detective comics have both been very good too and guardians of the galaxy was good too when uh before i finished it so those are my recommendations. Star Wars, I'm intrigued by. I think I'm going to get the trade paperback when it's uh, in a graphic novel form so I can get them all at once. Cool. So, there you go, Hobie. Or, sorry, it. Jordan. All right, so the next one is from Bob. He says, uh, I just watched the trailer for Matt Damon Mars movie, The Martian. Looks pretty cool, but my in college, my roommates forced me to go see the movie Mission to Mars and now I think I have some form of Mars movie PTSD. Uh, have you seen Mission to Mars? Anybody? Gary Sinise? I believe I have. It's, I didn't think it was been that bad. Went, I saw it when it first came out, so it's been what, it was 15 good. years, 20 years. Yeah, it's it was a while. It was not good from what I remember. It's all right. It was a little slow. It's not very really not, slow. Very not not a lot of action pace. No. There no. wasn't. I will but say that. It was more probably a psychological, intellectual depth kind of movie. Make you think about things rather than an action shoot em up. You know, uh, can't see. Things come out at night and hunt you down and kill you kind of movie. Uh, it, I think it was billed as like an action adventure and it was not. There was a lot more thinking involved. Yeah, more so. cerebral. Uh, did anyone see the preview for The Martian? Matt Damon. No, I've seen Matt a Damon. for it. Uh, he basically is in this space... Uh, um, man uh, Mission to Mars. Yeah, Man Mission to Mars. And He's something his, goes wrong. In and, his space suit. Yeah, and... Storm prematurely hits. Yes. They have to leave. Yes. And they presume him missing and dead. Dead. And that's all I know. Yes. And then so basically... he plays the exact same character that he played in that uh, Matthew McConaughey movie not too long ago. Interstellar. Interstellar. But he's on Mars trapped. And, well, that's well, yes. exactly the same I, character he played. I thought you were going to say he played the same person that he but did in Good Will Hunting. I like, yeah, <laughs> he's trapped in one place. <laughs> he needs to move on. And basically, he's trapped, and he's uh, they have this colony set up, like a small colony in it. And he basically realizes an ant that colony. It's not an ant colony. Oh, okay. Uh, he has thirty-one days to survive in this colony. Is basically what it was geared for. This small colony. And so he's like, I have 31 days to learn how to live on this planet, or otherwise I'm dead. So he starts, and it's enclosed, obviously, the thing. So he starts farming. He starts, like, growing crops. He starts, you know, figuring out how to do it. And what happens is he sends a message back to NASA. Eventually, they he finds a way to send a message back because they think he's dead. And they said, we'll be there, but you have to survive for a total of 461 days for us to get to you. And so he counts it down on the board, and he has to survive 461 days until the ship comes. And 462nd day comes by, 
And they're like, we kind of missed you. Sorry, you weren't there at the bus stop. <laughs> we couldn't get it the funding from Congress. <laughs> it was raining on launch day. <laughs> we pushed it back. <laughs> so I, it looks good. I'm very intrigued mm. by it. So uh, it comes out in November. So I think I will uh, be looking for it. Well, non-player is, it's, uh, it takes place in the future, and there's a tamale salesman, or a, a tamale delivery girl. A hot tamale? It does not specify. I would say so. Probably a hot tamale, tamale delivery yeah. girl. I, I didn't in look the at food? the pictures. The hot okay. tamale? But she's but she plays in this online fantasy world and she's an elite warrior warrior there and uh, she, she the, plays Skyrim. It sounds like the um, the online fantasy world and the real tamale salesman or tamale delivery person world start to interact and Ooh. Okay. That, that's just what I read from a website. Okay. Psychological thriller. All right, next from Bobby H. What is the best Spielberg film he directed after the turn of the millennium? Now, that would be 2001. And Jeff Morris, you're a big Steven Spielberg fan, right? He is not a good director. <laughs> Especially after 2001. Well, your, your hatred for Spielberg knows no bounds, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, okay. but, uh, so picking the best one is... Let's like go the- through some of these. Okay, since so 2001. Well, I've got my answer already. Well, hold on. I want to say it. Hey, what's yours? Munich. Oh, Munich is good. It is good. That is, is a good. good flick. Okay, I didn't see Munich. <laughs> ah, see? I, 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 if you see it, you may like it. Yeah, it, it actually, it, you may I, like it. I, it deals I, I'm with not going to, to, to say Even that the sec, the sex scene in it is brutal. It's a heavy. It's a it's yeah. a heavy uh, heavy topic. It's where the um, the Mossad goes after the terrorists that did the uh, Munich terrorist attack. Mm-hmm. During the Olympics, where they killed the uh, Jewish athletes, and the main character is all gung ho to do this because their whole goal is to track these guys down and just kill them. However, as time wears on, the, the toll of him basically, in his mind, almost reversing the roles where he's the killer now, you know, takes a, a, a heavy toll on him mentally and psychologically. Does it play like a Spielberg film? Like, no, not at all. Like, Actually, is it like I, heavy-handed? Like, dude, does he like cue the music when you're supposed to feel this way? Type of uh, black and white, except movie. for a girl in a I don't think it was that bad of. though. In that one, I really don't. I think it was really good, I, almost to the point where I forgot that he actually directed it until I started looking it up, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that was him. Um, I will say, uh, I'm looking at this. Because uh, you're a big AI fan, right? <laughs> or, <laughs> the the destroyed you know, Stanley Kubrick's legacy talking, with yeah, that one movie. Uh, let me see here. Let's let's go through these. AI 2001. That it's was, just that he's directed. That's directed. got one of the the biggest cringe worthy moments of all time. When the I, I don't even remember what the the ending the bear has. Yes, the bear hands up something. Yes, <laughs> and I'm like, no, what are you <laughs> doing, you stupid director with the stupid bear and the girl in the red dress? That was that was, that was a different movie. <laughs> no, that was the devil in the red dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Minority Report. Not, not See, that was I different. hated that uh, movie. I wasn't a big fan. It, it was, I like this one. Catch me if you can. I do like that one. Love Catch Me or, If You Can. I avoided that on purpose. It was good. I uh, I would watch it if it were on TV. I've watched it several times. The Terminal, horrible film. I didn't horrible. Even bother to go see that. We previewed okay. that. War of the uh, that was in 04. War of the Worlds in 2005. Horrible, horrible film. Horrible. I was but really the, disappointed in that film. Yeah. But the worst since the millennium, I think, is next. War Horse? No, no. Munich was 05. Oh, okay. Uh, no, That's no, you guy. still have a couple more coming. Uh, War, War Horse is by far the worst. Indiana hey, Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I forgot was, he directed what that. Kind of rating, what bad. kind of rating did they give Munich? I think it was R-rated. No, no, I'm talking about like, you know, stars or... 7.6 out of 10. Really? Yeah. That's it? It was up for Best Picture, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, 2008 was Kingdom uh, Crystal Skull. Skull. I oh. completely ignored that. You need to see it. It's so bad. I saw it, but I completely ignored it as a choice. Uh, Adventures of Tintin. Remember that? Oh, the cartoon? Yeah. yeah. Was it? That, that bombed. 
I don't think French it did. I don't think it was a bad comic book thing. Movie, they though. said it wasn't bad, but a lot of people were turned off by. 2011. Horse. There it is. War Horse is my my least it's favorite. Just travesty when horses I think die of in all of Spielberg's. I mean, never mind human beings, but you know, horses. <laughs> and it was up for oh best picture. Yes. Yes. I never saw yeah. it. I had no desire to see well, it. Well, I, I always watch all the movies that are up for Best Picture, and I saw it in the theater, and first time I fell asleep, and I'm like, oh, no, I need to watch it again. <laughs> and it was terrible up to the point where I fell asleep. Uh, 2012 was Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln I'd, wasn't terrible. I've never seen the whole movie. I've seen parts of it. Yeah. It was okay, but it felt like it was a... Uh, uh, what's the goofy conspiracy guy? Did oh, Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Yeah, it was like Oliver Stone did Lincoln. That would be funny. <laughs> I like to see Oliver Stone yeah. do Lincoln. <laughs> Has he done anything recently, he, Oliver Stone? Drugs. He's, yeah, he's, drugs. he's been doing a lot of movies that just kind of slip under the radar. Really? Yeah. Like he did. He did the 911 did movie. Um, 911. Oh, with Nicolas or, Cage. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, Why was Nicolas really? Cage in that film? I didn't know that was Oliver Stone. I didn't even know yet. I'll get the. Uh, he's doing Ready Player One, which Jeff now was really excited about. Ready Player One, that's yep. correct. Steven oh, Spielberg. Yeah. Um, he's also doing. This is what's in the development for Spielberg. Montezuma. It looks like a disaster film. Paul's of. It's what I do. No idea what that is. Indiana Jones Five. It's what I do. That's the uh, follow up to that thing that you do. Is it a sequel yeah, to Tom Hanks one? <laughs> uh, Bridge of Spies, which has a poster out. But nothing else. Uh, 2016, the BFG. So, big uh, fucking guy. Guy. Sure. Uh, Montezuma, a Spanish explorer, Hernando Cortez, Cortez, wages a historic battle against the Aztec Emperor. So that's the. That's uh Didn't Mel Gibson do that one? Oh, that was a different one. That, oh, was, that was Passion of the Christ. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He did another one too. <laughs> that was something Tekka, wasn't it? Yeah, really? something. I actually saw that movie. And was it good? I actually liked it, believe it or not. Did you? It was all subtitled. You had to read it. No, no, not really. But I actually, I actually kind of liked it. It actually delved into a lot of the uh, native uh, Latin and Central American you know, history, mm-hmm. especially with the, I think it was the Aztecs, wasn't it? Or yes, the it was Aztecs. Aztecs. I think it was Aztecs. Yeah. I think it was what he had. Did, Did, uh, it was a brutal, brutal uh a brutal culture in regards to, you know, the sacrifice to the gods and the sacrifices of their enemies and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever been into uh, Tenecatlan, Tenec- 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 whatever the hell it is? Easy for you to say. Should have done that in more yeah, Freeman exactly. voice. Tenecatlan. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, having been to some of the archaeological sites and looking at that kind of stuff, I mean, it's pretty freaky. Mm. But, but if the not, movie did a very good, very good job, especially if you've been to one of those sites and you can see it in your head a lot more. Uh, was Mel Gibson in it? Uh, he no. was Christ, yes. Oh, he was in his Christ. He appeared to one of the Aztecs, and they gave him gold discs. Oh. That nobody else was allowed to see. Oh, okay. And he wrote the secrets on it. I think they, I saw the play. And then Book they went Mormon? to Salt Lake City. Yes. <laughs> Don't fuck the baby. Don't fuck the baby. <laughs> Anyone else see Book of Mormon? No. Oh, it's no, a great scene. Nobody has, honestly. That's why I'm making it's a joke about film. the film. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. I was talking about the play. I know, I <laughs> not the actual cerebral. Book of Mormon. Sorry. Oh, we lost them. <laughs> anyway. No, you're not allowed to see it. Yeah, them. yeah. But what did they say? Well, I'm telling you. And I'm going to tell you something different now. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, next, moving on. <laughs> For all our Mormon listeners, you can send your complaints to I'm, me. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Spielberg, it's, uh, uh, I'm going Catch Me If You Can. Uh, catch Me If You Can. Okay. Blake's going Munich. Munich. So. I haven't, and uh, in Munich's defense, I haven't seen Munich. Uh, Bobby H. does have a response to this, but I can't pull it up on our website right now. So uh, we will talk about it next week, his yeah, response. That's fine. I have the next one, we got the Dip Man. Paul, the Dip Man, says, What are your thoughts on the new Nintendo console using the Android software? I'm intrigued by this. I really don't care. It's I not don't a, like Nintendo. War Horse was really bad. <laughs> on the Nintendo console? <laughs> <laughs> the War Horse video game? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not sure what this means. Uh, okay, so basically they've been using... Uh, I. I was what's the Apple for uh, software iOS iOS yeah 
They've been using that for all their consoles. Well, now they're moving to the next console is going to be Android software. Yeah. Here's what the rumor is. Droid. That they've done so well in the handheld market that their console market is kill- dying because the Wii U did not do well because they did a horrible a job horrible, marketing it. Horrible concept. Yeah. Horrible. I love my Wii U. I play it with my son. Well, all the but, games, all the games were geared towards eight-year-old boys. Correct. Here's the or thi- girls. Yeah, and if you he, picked a girl, and that's fine. But the avatar, issue is, everybody that I talk or to, whatever. that is, <laughs> what? <laughs> everybody <laughs> I talk to had an issue because they thought it was just an extension of the Wii. They didn't know it was a whole new console. So that's their issue. That Nintendo just hor- was horrible at marketing it. Anyways, to uh, but with the Android, here's the rumor: is that it's going to be a system that is going to be a home console, but you're going to be able to pick it up and take it with you in the car and go anywhere with it. So it's going to be a home console that you can take as a handheld system too. So I don't have an issue with that. I think that I think they're doing that because Android. I think is more compatible with a lot of the mobile devices. They can use that a little bit easier. Maybe it's easier to work with on software. So I think that's what the big plan is for Nintendo is that the next system is going to be a home console that you can also take with you, like in a game pad system. So that's, that's, that's what I keep hearing. So I'm not against it. I like Nintendo. I like to see them do something. Uh, I love my, I love the Wii U. There's just not enough games out for it. That's the problem. And so it doesn't matter. You can use iOS, you can use Android. It doesn't matter. If you don't have third-party developers making games for you, it's going to be a bust. It doesn't matter who it is. Here's the deal. If you don't have young children, you're going to go buy a console, you're thinking Xbox One yep. or PS4. I will agree because I have the I mean, PS4. You're not even thinking of Nintendo. I have the PS4. Unless and you want to play that goofy-ass, big-headed tennis game where everybody's got heads the big sizes. On what? I'm done the Wii. Oh, I don't. Oh, you mean the Wii Sports? Yeah, the Wii <laughs> okay. Sports. That's it. Uh, Mario Kart's really fun. But again, I'm playing it with my son. There you go. So, And my son loves it. He's five. So, you know, it's great for kids and, you know, that. But Case I, in point. I, I play the PS4 when I'm by myself. I, I just got Grand Theft Auto V for the Xbox One. And I have a six-year-old at home, and I figured, hey, you just jump in cars and you drive around. This will this will be fun. Have so you waited, ever played waited, the Grand Theft Auto? I went to sleep and I tried it. <laughs> oh, okay. And the, and the language is so bad. Like, like my wife, she cusses up a storm in mm-hmm. front of my son, and and it comes nowhere close to every other word in this game. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's very it's very good. Time. I'm not. I'm not dissing the dialogue in Grand Theft Auto V. It's great dialogue. It flows really well, but uh, I don't want my son ever hearing this as long <laughs> as he lives. <laughs> I was intrigued to buy, get you that. Teach, I just teach, never did. You teach your son, you know, if you're you're feeling low on health or you need, you know, medical care, you know, go have sex with a hooker in your car and everything and, will be better. And then you beat uh, her up to get the money back. Yeah, you beat her to get the money <laughs> back. That, that takes knowledge and skill to be able to get yeah. the, the hookers just to... Tear somebody out of their exactly. car, beat them up, and then get in the car and drive around. That's, right. That's completely. I remember the Grand Theft Auto Three, the big one that broke. You know, the one that really made it. And I got it. And I'm not saying, oh, you know, I got it before everyone. It wasn't that. I don't know why I bought it. I think it was on the original Xbox. I bought it or PS. Uh, I forget. I think it was Xbox 360. It might have been on I one of the 360. And nah, I, I think it was the first three. Xbox. Right. And I bought it. And I went into work, and I was telling all these people I worked with, like, this game is batshit crazy. I'm beating up hookers. I'm driving around. They're like, what are you talking about? Within two days, five people in the store that I worked at bought it. And they're like, that game's batshit crazy. And then, like, within two weeks, it blew up all over the world that everybody was getting. Because it was a little game that no one ever talked about. Uh And I got it. I don't even know why I bought it. I was just looking for a new game. And I'm like, this is the most fun. And we would have my friends would come over. Rockstar, so it must be great. I don't even know why I thought that. But I, I remember on, you know, after work, getting off at 10 or 11 o'clock, my buddies would come over and we would just all play this. And it was a single player game, but we would all take turns just <laughs> killing everything. Like, uh, oh, I found a tank. It, now, doesn't that concept scare you? What's that? As a person, as you, you remove yourself from the video game to context. What is it about games like that that makes everybody so happy that they'll make three, four, and five, and they'll make billions of dollars oh, off yeah. this it's game. Oh, yeah, And, and you're, you're, living, yeah. you're living basically as a fantasy version of yourself doing these horrible things. Mm-hmm. 
horrible things. And you just said you were excited about it by yourself. It's a fun game. Hey, but you'd rather it, do it, like, it there on the video game than you would in real life. Yeah, but but the, the whole side effect of that isn't it? Isn't that whole side effect of that? The uh, anonymity of that and going and doing the the trolling thing and the horrible things on the internet to mm. people and you know just playing that, these video that games. Sounds that sounds like something. That the whole uh, purpose of the video game is for you to be just a complete evil asshole. person. Yes, it is. That sounds like something a bleeding heart liberal would say. Oh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> no one's ever accused Blake of that. <laughs> No, well, the, the video a, games are causing yeah. the, the, the uh, I wouldn't, here's say, my I wouldn't thing. say there's a direct correlation, but I would probably say it'd be something maybe ancillary or something. I think people play it to, I think people play it and then they get it out of their system and they don't they don't have to worry about it. I don't think there's I don't think there's much of a correlation. I think if man, we're going deep now. I think with violence and video games and that, I think if you're going to be a violent person, a video game is not going to push you over the edge. I, every Something is going to push you over the edge. But do you it doesn't matter it, what it is. Do you think it makes you more tolerant to be a witness and to be a bystander uh, okay. to horrible things that go on? Because here, mm. here let, let, me, let, me, let me go down, let me do an extreme example. Okay. Which I don't understand. Okay. Right? I don't understand if I'm in this situation. I know people get paralyzed by fear and et cetera. But let's think about the whole Columbine situation. Okay. Right? As we're going through the library, there's only three of them. And there's a ton of students Two. in the library. Two of them. Yes. Ton of students in the library. And they basically go through and they assassinate. Mm-hmm. Schoolmates. Yes. Everybody's par- too paralyzed by fear. Everybody's too afraid to do something. Is it because they become too much of a bystander or things? Because, you know, in my mind, if five of us rush these guys, it's over. Correct. You know, but I, obviously I, I understand people react in different things. It's a fight like, or flight, though. But, but, it's fight but or flight. Watching the video games, watching the extreme violence, watching on on TV... Does all that make you more of a desensitive? Desensitized? desensitized to the violence, desensitized to the horror of everything. Sure, I think it does. I think it does. I think anything you see on TV now, and I'm not blaming you know, TV for that. The same thing with all, all these kids that you know take videos of horrible incidents that's happening mm-hmm. in front of them instead of doing bystander intervention. I, I'm I'm not doubting that. It probably does desensitize them. I'm not doubting mm-hmm. that one bit. Imagine uh, 40 years ago, somebody seeing the blood and guts that we see on in any movie or any video mm-hmm. game. They would have heart attacks. They would yeah. completely blow their mind. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, a I, gradual build, build up. up. Yeah, I agree. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't just count that. It probably does desensitize you. For me... What I do now, if I've had a bad day at work or I'm just stressed out in that after the kids go to bed, my wife knows why I'm like just need an outlet. I go upstairs and play my PlayStation and I play my wrestling game, mm-hmm. my WWE. Love it. I play that and after yeah, an but, hour but, of that, but but that re- WWE thing it, falls in line of the imaginary wrestling. Correct, thing, which but is it's all still staged. violence. It's still staged violence, but it's correct. not real. Everybody knows that it's not yeah. real. But, you know, you can say video games aren't real either. But I get what you're saying. The shooting and that. I also can play Call of Duty. I can play those games. I can get some stress out and be done with it. Yeah. So, I I, I think it does desensitize you to mm-hmm. a lot of things. You know, I don't have much empathy to begin with, so I don't know if it really desensitizes me anymore. But I think you I think you can say, though, anything on TV and the news can do, mm-hmm. desensitize you more than a video game, though. See, I can't even do, like, uh, the Thief, Dishonored, Skyrim... You know, Baldur's Gate, uh, even all those stuff. I can't do evil things because I feel guilty about it. I will say that uh, I when feel, I, I, yeah, it's like, like even the guards. I don't kill the guards. I knock <laughs> them out. I knock <laughs> them out. <laughs> you know, unless they're evil people, then I kill them. Then uh, I'm like, all right, that's justified. Remember Star Wars Leg- uh, Lord of the? What is that Legend or what was that Star Wars RPG game back in the day from Bioware? Knights of the Old. Yes, Republic? Knights of the Old Republic one and two. Yeah. As much as I would love to have like the evil powers in it, I always went down the good path. I always did. And yeah. I still wanted to be the bad because guy. Because there was hope for your soul. I, I think that's Brigger. all gone now. But no. I hope for yeah, so many. Back Theft in Auto. the day, yeah, I up. haven't played Grand Theft Auto <laughs> since 3. I'll be honest. I have not bought a new one. <laughs> So Jeff what? Morris's soul is done. He bought five. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> oh, it, the graphics are phenomenal. Oh, they are. <laughs> and all the cars follow the traffic laws until you crash into them and then they start honking <laughs> at you. Or they start running away. And it's it's amazing how how deep this, this thing is. You can buy land and condos and everything else, can't you? 
You haven't probably uh, ever gotten yeah, 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 You can buy land. I can and... only play it after my son goes to sleep. Okay. And then with the volume very, very low. <laughs> you don't get some headsets. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the best part about the PlayStation 4 is uh, the headphone. You put the headphone into the game controller and you just put it into your ear. You, you don't. The TV doesn't even get it. My wife can be in the same room as me and she doesn't even hear the TV because mm-hmm. it all goes through my headphone, which well, is awesome. I love that uh, yeah. that option. Well, the prostitutes in this one are actually first person too. So you What? So you actually see them... Really? Doing you? And, Is there and, nudity? Uh, there's nudity. Yeah. What? What the? <laughs> so it's like it's Leisure like, Suit Larry meets Grand Theft Auto. It's graphic. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. Like like uh, you can pay three different amounts for the the prostitutes and. Can you get arrested by a cop uh, for paying for the prostitute? Like a sting? Not yet. Not uh, yet. I, I've only just started. <laughs> I he hasn't was, gotten past the prostitute thing yet. <laughs> he's in the low of the, uh, I, I, He's I in the slums. I I just the use all my, I've been going through all the prostitute levels. I use all my money on the prostitutes. <laughs> and I go get more money. <laughs> I then I go use back. the money I get on the prostitutes. I gotta go back. <laughs> But what, but what started this conversation, everybody realizes, oh. is what are your thoughts on the new Nintendo console using Android software? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. The direct opposite of Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> Nintendo. It's one hell of a tangent for the Tangent Network. <laughs> yes, Tangent go. Bound. Tangent Bound. We were bound for some I hope we answered your that. question, Dip Man. All right, Dip Man, did that answer we're, your question? We're 56 minutes and we haven't even gone through listener feedback. I thought we'd be done early on this episode. Uh, well, well, let's keep going. We got Paul, Pop Culture uh, Cafe at TP. PCC We're going Cafe. to skip the pop culture one this week because I want Jeff to be here for it. Because it's right. a DC co- uh, Marvel thing. All so right. pop well, culture you go, cafe. Pop culture, you gotta wait until next week. Yes, I apologize. You gotta download pop us one more time. Yes, and pop culture. Thank you for playing our promo on your uh, show. Thank you. That's right. All right, here you go. Here's a good one. Actually, <laughs> Doctor Number One and Doctor Number One. Really disappointed that there was no graphic novice women's World Cup preview on Bad Ideas. It's in Canada. Oh, I'm so excited about the World Cup. Men or women, it doesn't matter. I'm so excited. I, am. I was just pretty excited. I, know. I watched the game last night with all the yeah. in-laws. Yeah, three to one, man. Three to one. Go that USA. Was pure luck. Oh, I know. The Australians should have won that three to one. Yeah. America, that... the American side was sloppy. Mm-hmm. Uh, How was the passing? Long box only. Oh, they didn't pass very well. But when they did, <laughs> they did make some things happen. Mm-hmm. It was very good. There were a couple smart plays. But uh, everything here. Here was the offense. Okay, get the ball, pass it to Rapino. Rapino, look for Wambach. Can't get to Wambach. Fiddle around with it. That's all soccer, isn't it? No. Pass. No. He's passing. He's passing. No. Oh my God, he's passing. You wanted to see good offense passing and good possessions. You watched the Australian side because they actually did it better and actually should have won three to one, unless Hope Solo doesn't make those saves or beat somebody up. She's got good reflexes after being, you know, <laughs> with domestic that's violence what, issues. That's what jail does to you. Jeremy Stevens, the Seattle Seahawks, former Seattle Seahawks tight end. Jail, jail, does good. jail makes you have good reflexes, so that's good. Yeah, it does. You know, when you're when you're in a lot of fights, I guess, you got good reflexes. <laughs> but no, whatever. she actually played very well and made two great saves. You know, the first save was like five minutes or else that would have changed the entire higher tone of the game where Australia would have been up one you know you know you know kicking her ass but uh, but uh, here's what I do have to say about this for uh, you know graphic novice uh, I would like to know one mm-hmm. uh, how are they able to play all those games in the in Canada with no snow okay. what do they do with the snow well I don't think it's snowing right now in Canada yeah, yeah it's in the Arctic isn't it I don't know Canada well, it is Arctic snow, up there, but right? I think it's like 60. I think it's 60. It's all above the Arctic Circle. Yeah, it's all above the Arctic Circle. How no. are they putting all that snow and ice up there? I don't know. And then, if the ice melted, it'd be all ocean, right? Then, then it would be water polo. No and I would watch wet. water polo. It would be awful wet. Right? Especially if horses are in it. Yeah, exactly. Bum, bum, bum. The other thing is, that, you know, they did a good job of cleaning the stadium out of all the snow and ice. Okay. And how's that interfere with hockey season? Hockey's almost over. It is? Yeah, there's no Canadian teams left. It's just Chicago Blackhawks. Oh, and that's Tampa. why these stadiums are available. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. My I Toronto Maple Leafs now. team and obviously Nichols Edmonton Oilers team, neither of them are sniffing the playoffs, so you're perfectly fine. I see. <laughs> but the real controversy yes, for this yes. Women's World Cup this mm-hmm. year on a serious note mm-hmm. is all the fields are artificial turf. Yes, yes. FIFA will not 
allow that for the men's game. Yes. So that just talks to uh, how sexist FIFA is and what they think of the women's well, game. Well, yes. FIFA's many things, including not only sexist, well, but well, corrupt. Oh, yeah. They're, oh, yeah. So how much money did Canada pay how to much all did those they... FIFA officials in order to get yes. the World Cup there on all those artificial turf surfaces? Not as much as uh, Qatar, or Qatar uh, is Obviously, paying. Qatar or Russia? Yes. Vladimir yes. Putin obviously emailed an awful lot of those guys. Did you see Scott's? Of course, if I got an email from Putin, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> right, yes, whatever you want. Just don't give me a uh, radiation BB pill to swallow or whatever. It says it was signed by Putin, but it looks like Snowden actually wrote the email, mm-hmm. so it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, my question is. Yeah, let me, let me, let me think about Snowden. Oh, uh, God. Let me see. <laughs> I'm concerned about individual rights and freedom and liberty. So where do I go to hide? Oh, yeah. Let me go to a place that doesn't allow you that. <laughs> They're very open over there. Go, go to a dictatorship. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not. It's only a dictatorship if you don't agree with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you disagree with them, you're dead. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, Russia was in World War One, and War Horse took place during World War One. So it all goes back to War Horse? It all goes back to Spielberg. War Horse. <laughs> and War Horse Could, could Hope Solo tame War Horse? What? Could Hope Solo tame War Horse? Mm-hmm. Who's Hope Solo? The goalie for the women's team. For you women's USA soccer. Uh, Obviously, you did not understand what he was talking about then. Well, she was I, also charged with domestic abuse of her partner. Like, beat the shit out of her. Did she go to jail? I for think like 30 he, I days? Think it was, unfortunately, I... Really, not you know, nothing to be fun of, but no. Unfortunately, I think it's both. I think it goes both ways. I think they yeah. both were pretty violent towards each other. If, I can't remember the specifics. I just know it's Jeremy Stevens, former Seahawks tight end, who was supposed to be good, but was a big bust. Yeah, because I had him on my fantasy football team many years. <laughs> jerk. Yeah, it was a bust. Okay, so there's your uh, listener. And now another installment of. News of the Geek. Was that your uh, Jeff Now impersonation? What are you talking about? That was Jeff Now. Oh, that was Jeff. He fil- uh, fil- uh, threw it in. He uh, sent it over to us. So uh, let me get to the right page. See, I'm all sorts out of whack here. I got the computer going. Uh, we were skipping draft day this week. Yeah, um, we're going to skip the first thing of the Marvel News of the Geek because uh, it's uh, launching Marvel's launching 55 to 60 new comics and you gotta have uh, Jeff for that because I don't know Jeff all these guys the cafe's gotta listen again next week uh, we'll do uh, in the latest comic book issue of Star Wars Star Wars issue number 6 uh, Princess Leia finds out that Han Solo is married when they fell in love Han Solo was yes. married? and as CNET points out the comics are considered canon by Disney and Lucasfilm so it means it's part of the official Star Wars story Han Solo was married to Sana. Sana Solo. Ugaka, Sana Solo. When he met Leia, ah, 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 and in the comic, Sana isn't really ready to give him up to the princess. Yeah, so Han Solo married to Sana, Sana. Solo. So Han Solo did shoot first. Ah! I get it. Okay. That's if the name I of the... turn this on, I go. There you go. There's your rim shot. (laughs) Or rim job, whatever. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) How did that become? (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Never mind. Uh, Escalated quickly. (laughs) I blame it on Grand Theft Auto 5. (laughs) Can we say the name of the episode is Han Solo did shoot first? Can we do that? I think so. Uh, The issue takes place before the Empire Strikes Back. Therefore, uh, before Leia tells Han that she loves him. So Leia's a homewrecker. Yes. She's a married. And here's record. the funny thing: like, then was Han really officially married, or could he actually get it they, annulled? I don't know. I you didn't know, read the issue. One of those things where he wasn't from the you know, article. Of sound mind was drunk, passed out. From the article, and they showed the the comic pan of the comic page of him, you know, her coming well, out. The Sana Solo Falcon. looked like uh, an alien chick, didn't she? Yeah, but she still looked very feminine. So like a tough, did, a tough ass she have, bounty like, two hunter. Tails out of her head or something? What? She did? Yeah. I didn't I see know. that. Are you making that up? No, the big blue woman with the big... I don't think that was her. No. Liam things. No. I would have been better if like he married a Jabba the Hutt, clo- like a Jabba the Hutt family member. Oh, that would have oh, been oh, interesting. Oh, 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 just to oh, fuck oh, with the oh, fanboys. Oh, 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 just to oh, see oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. What? <laughs> uh, oh, 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 does anyone care that he was married? Like, I don't understand. Like He seemed like the would... type who would cheat on his wife. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
but I don't. E- yeah, I, I feel like he, he wanted I thought be- he had that bromance thing going on with Chewie the whole time. <laughs> anyway, come on. I, I mean, I mean, if he was married, he'd be like flying the Millennium Falcon through the asteroids, and Sano would call him on the you know communicator thing. At can you pick up the, some milk at the worst <laughs> possible time? You're right, you're right. And she'd be annoying him. Like, when are you coming back? I don't care if that thing goes in 12 parsecs. Get your ass home. And, and tell like, Chewie to shut it in the background. You know, yeah, or it'd be like when they're stuck behind the uh, the bridge on the big Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. And they're mm-hmm. trying to be quiet. Yeah, in the trash. Yeah, they can yeah. go out of the trash. Like, and they're getting ready to go. It'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. better pick up. I know you're annoying me. <laughs> you're annoying me, Han. And just, <laughs> or on the Death Star <laughs> loudspeaker. On the they're like... <laughs> We're picking up some <laughs> negative feedback here. I, mean, I like that. What is the source? <laughs> it's his wife. I understand. <laughs> Palpatine's like that to me. <sighs> Darth, pick up some milk. <sighs> Even the force cannot. <laughs> With ten evil wife. <laughs> How are you still married? <laughs> Barely. Barely. <laughs> uh, it is funny, though. It's like, I guess. I mean, I don't see him as the marrying type. No, I'll, not at all. No, that's why when she said, I love you, Leia says, I love you. He goes, I know, because he's a badass. I know, because I'm already married and I can't say That's I love what they're you. saying. That's why he said, I know. What? I was like, oh, what? that would be terrible because the I know is. Yeah, it's because it's he's iconic. a badass. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah. So, uh, who let that in? Who let that plot in? Ah, the writers ought to be fired. Uh, let's see. Christopher Nolan, some quickies. Uh, he explained what he saw as the concept of reality in the film Inception. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, um, if I may say, I, I picked this because Jeff loved the movie Inception in mm-hmm. the fight scene. So DiCaprio's character doesn't wait to see if the spinning top drops at the end because he no longer cares to distinguish between a possible harsh reality and a wonderful dream. Which uh, I always thought was very dear of mm-hmm. that movie because they always had that personal item. And I, 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 felt like, I felt like it didn't matter at the end. He was with his kids. He didn't care. You're right. Keep reading. Uh, according to Nolan, the way the end of the film worked, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Cobb, he was off with his kids. He was in his own subjective reality. He didn't really care anymore, and that makes a statement. Perhaps perhaps all levels of reality are valid. Uh, so there you go. I kind of thought the same thing, like it didn't matter. He was stuck there. He was there where he wanted to be, and he walked away with the top spinning on the table. Yep. Because you know what? He just really didn't care about anything else anymore. Yeah. And what difference did it make? Yeah, he was happy. Mm-hmm. I did get annoyed with the dream inside a dream inside a dream inside a dream. I thought that was kind of frustrating. Uh, I thought after a while, I was like, okay, let's stop. A dream with inside a dream with inside a dream of somebody else's dream. Yeah. Dreaming about your dream inside yeah. that dream. Yeah. But it makes for a great kick ass fight scene in the hallway. It does? it does? It would have been great if at the end it was all a dream of those aliens from um, Simpsons. Oh, K- Krang and Kudos? <laughs> Kang and Kudos? Or, or, yeah. or he wakes up. And he's on the Titanic. <laughs> he's like freezing to death. He's in the water. It's all a big illusion. I like that. I like that. <laughs> That's how they should have tied it all together. <laughs> I'm in hell. I wonder if Jeff now would have liked that ending. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's overrated. Anyways, uh, movie news. Uh, Jeff Morris, I put this in for you since you're a big movie guy. Uh, some movies coming out. That not oh, me guess. Anywhere. Please tell me, is there going to be another Born? There is, in <gasps> 2016. Is it the prequel to World War Z? No, 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 no. Hold on. Uh, oh, oh no, I'm sorry, I was getting to Born first, sorry. Born That's with Matt, Matt Damon and Jeremy Renner. They're both going to be in it. Oh, uh, the so. prequel to the prequel. No, I think it's the sequel, isn't it? I don't the know. The sequel to the prequel. I don't prequel. know that film, I don't know that timeline anymore in the Born movies. Uh, and Jeff, you're right, prequel to World War Z. Uh, that comes out in 2017. Does that really need a prequel? Does Does it, really yeah, does it need a prequel? So the Bourne movie is not the prequel to the world. No, no, Bourne is not prequel. Okay. In the notes, it looks like that, but it is not. Okay. Now, that's because our intern doesn't know how to punctuate. There's a comma! There's a comma, fuckers! <laughs> Should have been a semicolon. Son of a bitch. Anyways, <laughs> the prequel to World War Z is actually called Ride Along 2. <laughs> you know, I saw World War Z. Yes. 
uh, when I was on vacation uh, down in Florida during a horrible rainstorm. During the middle of the rainstorm, the sound goes out. Right at the moment where they finally go to the lab and they discover what the cure to the lab or the or the whatever happens to the lab was so important that it ended the movie shortly, 20 minutes later, and I don't know what the <laughs> fuck it was because the sound went out. And they had this revelation. The only thing I think of was like they found patient zero. They had the cure. The only thing I know is that I'm watching this and some of the work's going on. And the next thing I know, everybody's cured and things are they're flying away and everybody's happy. I'm like, what the fuck did I just miss? <laughs> the, the, only, the worst time that the sound could go out. I had a similar experience with Guardians of the Galaxy. It was right at the end. He he's about to open up his mother's present. Oh, the second the second present that he's held. Yeah, the second mm-hmm. present that he's held. And then my my I think he was five at the time. My five year old says, "I gotta go pee," and I'm like, "Can't you wait like three seconds?" No, I gotta go pee. Gotta like, go I now. considered telling him to just. Piss, the, piss, <laughs> piss in the chair. Why you actually you texted this? me because you wanted to know what it was. I remember <laughs> I, I that. I Why aren't you wearing diapers anymore? Damn it! <laughs> but I think World War Z ruined the zombie genre. Because they're fast! Well, it wasn't a terrible movie. Special effects were just weird, but, goofy looking. Yeah. But I think it... I think up to World War Z, zombies were getting bigger and bigger with Walking Dead and... Brad Pitt. All kinds of zombie movies Brad coming Pitt, out. zombies. Angelina Jolie. And How then, can it miss? There you go. And then World War Z, I think it started to get... That's where it jumped the shark. That's where the whole zombie phenomenon jumped the shark. It's going to go back to a fringe uh, cult following. Kind of like Twilight, the vampires are now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it did take Twilight with it, so the vampires on the fringe is okay. So what you're saying is the whole zombie thing is dead? Ah, uh, where's the where's yeah. Nick at? Come on, Nick, wake Hold up! On, let me turn it on. That is the worst rim job ever. How's that? Or rim shot? I don't know what it's called anymore. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. There There's you your go. rim job. But but zombies are going hey, back to where they rim belong job. is a cult cult thing. I agree. I agree. Slow too. Slow moving. I need them slow moving. Yeah, yeah, and and they'll be back there, and they won't have. Like fifty movies that come out a year where where zombies are it's post apocalyptic zombie movie. Are you looking forward to Fear the Walking Dead? The C, the prequel to Walking the Dead from the, the AMC. Dead? Have you oh, seen the, it? Uh, the yeah, preview, yeah. Where right. it takes place in Los Angeles on the West Coast. I'm really turned off by I I'm behind on the new season, but the, okay. the very first episode of the new season just really turned me off of Walking Dead. Because it seems like I think that's where the, the trough scene is where they jump the shark. Oh, I love the trough scene. Well, they if they they just happen to line up the people we care about at the end. Of the <laughs> well, trough, yes, that is true. They happen to stop cutting <laughs> it's their throats, luck? and they happen it's to stop luck? cutting their throats right, right at, at Glenn. People, the right at Glenn that we, yeah. that we care about, and that's when I realized that hey, they're no longer. It, Main characters are no longer in danger. And you're like, they're not even trying now. <laughs> this ain't no George R. R. Martin Game of Thrones shit where the main characters die. I mean, come on. Well, even even Game of Thrones, this new season, they're not killing off anybody. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm two, two episodes behind. Oh, okay. This past week they did. Yeah, keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> We'll come back to you. Know, we'll come back to Look at me. I didn't weeks. even watch it. I know that, two, that I know a main character <laughs> yeah, died this week. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Internet. Uh, Ride Along 2 with Kevin Hart. Oh, and Ice-T. Can't wait. That looks good. Zoolander 2. Yeah, you skipped Fifty Shades Darker. That's in 2017. Fuck Fifty Shades. (laughs) Ah, I get it. (laughs) Hold on, here we go again. Ah, get the rim job. Get it, rim job. Fifty Shades Darker. Ah! (laughs) See what happens when Jeff's not here. (laughs) (laughs) It just goes down. Uh, Zoolander 2, 2016. Now, who's that guy in it? Does it have the original Owen cast Wilson coming back? and Ben Stiller are both Stiller back. Stiller and Wilson? Yep. I, I really hate Ben Stiller, but I did like Zula. I did too. Zoolander, I did too. I thought it was a good Blue one. Blue Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> the face. Or the best one, he's in the coal mines. I got the cough. <coughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh, I like the gas fight that they had. Oh, <laughs> they're spraying <laughs> gas on each other. Yes, at the beginning. And being all sexy about yes. everything. <laughs> and then at the end, they have a big statue commemorating it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Friday the 13th reboot, 2016, which may be pushed back because it was going to be a first-person 
um, or not first person. I'm sorry, like a uh, hidden uh, fill or hidden uh, footage um, type oh, of film. Like a found film. Found footage. footage. Sorry, thank you. Found, found film footage. footage. Yeah, like Blair but, Witch, which I think would work in it. I've talked about that before. I think that could work. But they uh, with Friday the Thirteenth is Blair Witch at a camp. I don't have an issue with the found footage. I think it would kind of work. But they said they're not doing that anymore, so now it might be going back and to scrapped. The, yeah. But I really like your idea of uh, first person from Jason's perspective. Jason's point of view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we find out how he catches up with them when they're running and he's just slowly walking, and then they turn around and he's right there. Jetpack. <laughs> Jetpack. Well, we'll be able to see because it it's yes! first person. Oh. They're cool, you'll never know. Uh, the Mummy reboot, 2017. I'd like to know how he perfectly stations himself underneath bunk beds that teenagers are going to have sex in. That's true, and then That's just go straight amazing. up with the machete. Uh-huh. Or I mean, just speaking pick, of that, just pick a bed and just lay there going, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. <laughs> That's gonna a wait. lot this of skill and patience. Uh-huh. I've got this spear, I'm going to wait. I can I'm bar- gonna wait. I can barely wait ten seconds on my load screens on the PlayStation exactly. Four, let alone eight hours until somebody comes <laughs> onto the top of the Hang bed. Out of the bedroom because some chicks got a shower. That's right. Uh, so we all have lots of respect for Jason for, <laughs> for his patience. <laughs> yes. Props to Jason Voorhees. There you go. That's the <laughs> <Jason> title. <laughs> Props to Jason Voorhees for his patience <laughs> and putting up with what he has to do. <laughs> In order to kill those teenagers. <laughs> Props to Jason Voorhees. Okay. Uh, or Jason Voorhees, a patient man. <laughs> <laughs> a patient man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, let's see. The Mummy reboot. Uh, they said that's going to tie into a, uh, what do you call it, the Universal Studios monster ones. Oh, That we yes. talked about. Oh, my goodness. George of the Jungle in it. Brandon Fraser. No. Or George of the Jungle would be better if he discovers the mummy. <laughs> uh, no, he's not. He is not. Entertaining at least. Uh, that's 2017. Furious 8, 2017 as well. These have all been greenlit by the respective studios. Fur- Furious 8, colon, we just want your money. Uh, so any of those sound really bad or exciting? I guess I'm excited about Born 5 again. Born 5. Uh, I'll, I'll see it, I'll see it if I'm on an airplane yeah. and there's nothing else for me to watch. Zoolander 2, I think, could be funny. I'll watch that. Um, oh, on a side note, uh, moment of silence for uh, uh, Jason Voorhees' mom in Friday the 13th. She passed away this past week, the Damn. actress. So, 80-something years old. And the reason why she did that... Uh, she did. Why she passed away? No, no, well, that was the old age. Why she passed away? Yes. Oh, no. Uh, they wanted her to be in the new reboot. She's like, I'm done. I'm killing myself. <laughs> That's it. I'm dying. <laughs> uh, so the reason why she was in Friday the Thirteenth. I learned this on Hollywood Babylon with Kevin Smith this week. Is that her Mercedes broke down in whatever year it was eighty one? I think it came out or eighty. And she said, "I need a sign." To get a new, you know, I need a new car. Please give me something. Her agent called her within a week and says, hey, you want to do this movie? It's a horror movie. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Send me the script. She read the script. She's like, nobody's going to watch this. But I really want a new car. So she did it just to get the new car. <laughs> yeah, because wasn't she actually a Broadway yes. stage musical kind of actor? Yeah. Actress? Yeah. And she was in semi-retirement at the time. Yeah. So, But she needed and cars. And she's first. remembered now as... Yes. Jace's mother. Kali Karima Dojabar needed a new rug. Uh, throw, uh, he needed a new uh, oriental rug for his house. And that's why he did airplane. Kill her. They they offered him 30000 and the rug he wanted was 35000 And I'm he told sure. his agent, give me 35000 and I'll do it. And they did. <laughs> I'm not sure Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is remembered as oh, I think so. his role in airplane I think as so. opposed to his basketball <laughs> career. <laughs> I don't know. I think about him more in an airplane than basketball. <laughs> yeah, when I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I think cockpit, airplane. <laughs> See? Thank you. I don't think about him in the NBA. <laughs> I don't think about the NBA. Yeah. Uh, Jason Statham has dropped out talks to play Bullseye in the second season of Daredevil. Jason uh, Statham can't do TV because he's got fine. all those shitty movies to do. Spy, which actually got good reviews. Uh, we'll talk about that in box office news. Mm-hmm. Uh, box office news. And Constantine... The television series is officially dead. Officially dead. No other network or... What, uh, no Yahoo. Nope. No Netflix. Nope. It's Nobody. officially dead. No it's a sci-fi. shame. It was a good show. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, I should say. It was all right. It was It was hard to get used to, but once I got used to it, I liked it. I, mean, I like the guy that played Constantine. The characters and the dialogue. Yeah. 
We've talked about it before. If you get rid of the first pilot, you're okay. If you get rid of the pilot, you're fine because the of the first, woman. First couple episodes where they're trying to establish the characters through this goofy dialogue. Like you can do it through relationships and events. You don't have yeah. to do it through goofy dialogue. Exposition. <laughs> yeah. Um, finally, Stephen Tobolsky. Tobolsky. Thank you. Who, who played, played Ned. Ned. Ned! On the film Groundhog Day stated during a recent interview with Chris Hardwick on The Nerdist. Uh, podcast that Bill Murray's character was trapped in Puxatani for 10,000 years in Groundhog Day. Because everybody wondered, how, how long? long was he there for? It was the question. Uh, why 10,000 years? Plato had a theory that one soul required 10,000 years to realize its full potential and attain complete understanding. This would compare this to enlightenment. And uh, Harold Ramis, a practicing Buddhist, said that it took 10,000 years for the soul to perfect itself. And that's why he said, uh, he told Stephen, it's 10,000 years is how long Bill Murray was there. So he said every day that he was there, Bill Murray was there, the character, he, uh, he spent the day doing something and basically becoming a better person. So I guess outside of, you know, taking the groundhog, you know, into a suicide spree or something like that. So, but he kept gaining, so. Yeah, so, yeah, so Harold Ramis said, no, Stephen, it's 10,000 years. Yes. Because... He was talking to Harold saying, hey, you know, some people say it was 994 days. Mm -hmm. Some say 166. And he said, no, it's 10,000 years. That's a long fucking time to relive the same day. And he's a really good piano player at the end, wasn't he? He was. And he knew all the Jeopardy questions. That's awesome. Is that great? Exactly. I hope they show that in the play that they're making. That's right. Who is your mother, Alex Trebek? (laughs) Well, Ned from Groundhog Day better be in a future uh, uh, draft day. You want to put a, You want to do a Groundhog Day draft? Ooh. That's a good one. That's a good one. I feel like I've done that one before. <laughs> ah, I did it, Rim Job. Uh, there is your news. I, I only have nine thousand nine hundred twenty-five more podcast episodes. <laughs> <laughs> there is your news of the geek. This is Jason from the History of Bad Ideas. You can catch a new episode of our podcast every Wednesday afternoon, dropping on Musings of a Geek Network, at Danger Entertainment Network, and even the Tangent Bound Network. You can also catch us on Stitcher and iTunes every week, and Geek Life Radio, that is at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central on Fridays, and on Radio-Blitz.com at 9 a.m. on Saturday mornings. Check us out. It's time for Box Office Bombs. Well, I guess I'll do a quick box office since Jeff's not here. That faker. Anyways, uh, box office news of the week. Cameron Crowe's Aloha fell 66%. Uh, That's not a good sign. Uh, to bring in only $3.3 million this past weekend. This is for June 5th through the 7th. Film has only made $16 million domestically and $17.9 million worldwide total on a budget of $37 million. I don't think it's getting its money back. I think it's about time for Aloha to say Aloha. Aloha! It's close already, isn't it? No, it's only made $17 million total. $17.9 million. Oh, I thought... I thought I... I no, no, no. 16. So it's made 1.9 million uh, worldwide, which is not good. I see. Uh, Tomorrowland, the movie that keeps bombing, has made 76 million domestically, total of 169 million worldwide, on a budget of 190 million, and is now guaranteed a loss for the studio based on uh, the marketing and everything. Just ticket sales? Yeah. It's made 100. Uh, Sorry, sixty-nine million you know, ticket sales. They're not going to make twenty million in DVD sales. Uh, they said it was a hundred million in marketing. So you're looking at about three hundred million total. Ooh, that's a that's an ugly but that's an ugly one. I guess there's no tomorrow for Tomorrowland. I like it. I like it. Yeah! yeah! No Maybe way. they could pay you an IOU because that's just as good, <laughs> good as money, money for Tomorrowland. Right. <laughs> Samson Idol is way off. Uh, top five of the box office, June 5th through the 7th, Spy, with Jason Statham and Melissa McCarthy, which has a 95% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Yes. Made $30 million its opening week on a budget of $65 million. I'm shocked. Uh, they said it actually got good reviews. Or a good movie. San Andreas made $26.5 million, total of $92 million, on a budget of $110 million for number two. That's uh, right, The Rock in a Helicopter. 
That's all you need is the rock, and he makes yeah. two hundred million. Uh, Insidious Chapter Three. Insidious made, colon. colon. I forgot to put Chapter colon. Three. Made twenty three million in its opening week on a budget of ten million. So it's Insidious double is, yeah. Chapter Four is coming. You just need to make a scary movie rated PG thirteen. You can. You make your money back. You can make double your money teens. back. Ten million or less is what it needs to cost. Mm-hmm. They've uh, got to be PG thirteen, as you said. Can't be R. And there has to be a Ouija board in it. Yeah, get a Ouija board. Yeah. Another bomb. Dog. Another bomb of the week. And Tara Reid has to be in it. Uh, Entourage made ten point five million in its opening week on a budget of thirty million. They were expecting anywhere between eighteen and twenty four million for its opening week, and it did not do it. This is been surprisingly i would expect a better numbers for this because of all the fans and all the hype that went into this movie but is it two years too late you think could be obviously i, I mean some of the descriptions i've heard about it is it's a uh, uh an mtv 1980s video <laughs> from start to end <laughs> i've heard that it's uh it's, it's basically just four tv shows tied together four okay TV show episodes and, uh, but the best description I heard was that it's uh, Sex in the City for bromances. <laughs> is uh, Sean Astin in it? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I don't know who's in the original Entourage. I've never seen I Entourage. I know Jeremy Piven's in Piven, it. Piven, yeah. And Kevin Dillon. Oh, Kevin Dillon. I don't know who those other schmucks are. And Tara Reed's in that one, too. She is, is she? awful. Jeff? Jeff, you're friends with her. She's really hot. Yeah, there you go. Can she come on our show? Uh, she doesn't like you guys. <laughs> we keep trying. No, you don't. No. <laughs> when you're on Sharknado 3 as a tech advisor, can you at least talk to her? Say, I listen. Wasn't, I wasn't invited back for two after our first... After our first Toby? the first time that Do I you was have on the e, show. Uh, I and no, Zeering or whatever on speed dial, can Zeering. you talk to him? Uh, okay. No, we just get infatuated. You know, we're just in, you know infatuated. Some people have, you know, wandering eyes. We're infatuated with her wandering boob. She has yeah. a lazy boob. Yeah, she got a lazy boob. <laughs> It just goes off to the side. <laughs> now, any progress that we've made, <laughs> still without Tara Reed. Still oh, no Tara Reed. Seventy-five Tara episodes in. Oh, still no Tara. No, not Tara Reed won't come on the show. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, Mad Max: Colon Fury Road made eight million. Total of 131 million on a budget of 150 million. Still under. Yeah, but worldwide, it's doing really good. And, uh, and the sequel's already been greenlit. I've not heard a bad thing about it yet. Is 98 it? or 99 percent still on Rotten Tomatoes. Still, still. Did you see the uh, news articles on how uh, some a lot of Mad Mad Max fans are overtaking advertisements on Amazon.com? No. With Mad Max references and questions about the uh, products. <laughs> Why? You haven't seen that? No. No. There's there's a spray can. Uh, paint for like spray painting cakes. Okay. And it's silver. And it looks like the uh, the crazy boys who try and kill themselves and get witnessed in Mad Max. Mm-hmm. And there's all kinds of like Mad Max questions about, you know, if I use this spray paint on my mouth, does it, you know, will I get metallic poisoning? <laughs> or the other thing, will this help me get witnessed? Will this help? <laughs> and, and so you go to, uh, I, you know, I, I thought I sent you the links to the story. I may have missed that one. Yeah, they're hilarious. Uh, the Mad Max uh, question. I'd Q&As go back and look see if I missed that on one. The uh, Amazon.com products. They've just taken over the complete That's awesome. uh, product reviews. Like, you know, this is the, the, the best. You're know, like, this is the best uh, cake spray for, uh, you know, road rage and road incidences <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. It's awesome. That is, I'm, did, I did not see that one. I'll go back and take a look at that. Crow my teeth out. God bless the internet. That's right. <laughs> it's awesome. But you know what's missing on this top five? What's that? The Glue Movie. Oh, Pitch, per- Pitch, Pitch Perfect 2. Perfect we, got all- a, we got a lot of hate from uh, people saying that is not for the Glee crowd. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, it isn't a Glee. I thought I was Glee. Jim now last week really liked the first one, so who knew? And you said you didn't mind it either, even the first one. I don't mind looking at it. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, did you see Pitch Perfect 2? I did not. Okay. I boycott it because it has Rebel Wilson. She's annoying. So yeah. she's my version. She's the male, female version of Kevin James. I cannot stand Kevin James. Yeah. Did you know that? I hate Kevin Just James. Folks on Kendrick should be fine. Uh, upcoming June 12th. Jurassic World. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, we, we all the dinosaurs were dead from the island, so we uh, we spliced the Velociraptor with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And a cuttlefish. And a cuttlefish. You know what? Shut it. 
This is gonna be the best film. I am so pumped for this. We spliced a pterodactyl with a velociraptor. And a Volkswagen. <laughs> with the brain of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know what? You're gonna be jealous because this is gonna be the greatest film ever. Chris Pratt's in it. His abs we are amazing. Chris Pratt. His with, abs. With Bryce Howard. With Brad, Prince, Brad Pitt's facial hair. Ew. From Legends of the Fall? Legends of the Fall. Okay, we're gonna do that one. You know what? This movie's awesome. I'm excited. Jeff, you're excited. I'm excited. Morris, you're excited. So I want to hear it. Is so. it is it Spielberg? Uh, he produced it. Colin Trevernal, whatever I forget. Uh, he's the one. Safety not guaranteed. Uh, director is the one that's directing this one. So uh, I am excited. I cannot wait. It has underwater dinosaurs. We took the little boy from Jurassic Park. They're not in it. Gave him some steroids. They're not in it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Don't ruin this for me. You can't ruin this for me. Every episode, every time I see a preview, I'm like, I can't wait. It's driving my wife nuts. She's like, I, can't, I don't understand. I was like, everybody loves dinosaurs. You're doing a velociraptor sound? That's the mating call. Oh, the velociraptor? Aren't you horny? <laughs> not Velociraptor, so no. <laughs> Morris, I'm glad you're sitting next to him. I'm in a different seat tonight. I'm not across from him. There's a reason why I have this blanket around me. Uh, anybody have hidden gems? No? No? Okay. <laughs> I got uh, your hidden gem right here. Stop it! <laughs> I have a hidden gem right here, Trebek. Yeah. <laughs> Is Jessica Tandy dead? I don't... No, 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 that's Jessica Lang that's not dead. I think Jessica Tandy's dead. Why? I think so. Are you turned on by Jessica Tandy? Is she your hidden gem? She's my hidden gem. Okay, good job, <laughs> Jessica Tandy. Jessica Tandy. All right. Uh, Kickstarter gem, Torso Bear 2, which I talked about earlier. Here's the Kickstarter. Kickstarter.com uh, slash project slash Brett, B-R-E-T-T, U-R-E-N slash Torso Bear hyphen volume hyphen two hyphen all hyphen stitched hyphen up hyphen fluffy Safi, uh, hyphen nor N-O-I-R hyphen ant. So, and if you could type all that off of Jason's voice right now, <laughs> you're fucking awesome. Uh, I have it. We have it on our Facebook page too. So go to that. Hey, go copy Torso and paste Mayor. it. Jessica Tandy died in 1994. Oh, uh, that's a shame. She can still be a hidden gem. Can you find her grave? That's the hidden. Uh, so yeah, Torso Bear uh, two. Go to their Kickstarter. Uh, they only need like five thousand dollars, I think, three thousand, something like that. Please. I bought mine today. Let's do it, people. That was the first Kickstarter I ever used. So let's do it. I want to see Toy Lane 2. And also, uh, Ken Johnson, who we talked about earlier, a couple of months ago, uh, he finished his uh, The Man Who Watched Batman the animated series. His book is out uh, digitally. Uh, you can actually go to our Facebook page and take a look at it. Uh, we have the link for him to uh, for you to buy it on there. Uh, digitally and hopefully in the future we can uh, talk to him but yes Ken Johnson's book The Man Who Watched Batman he goes through each episode uh, we got an advanced copy of chapter one and uh, it was re really good uh, so take a look at it if you're a fan of the Batman the animated series and uh, we will talk more about it uh, in probably the next couple weeks or so That music means top five. Uh, this week is top five remakes better than the original. So uh, we talked about this last week. Uh, next week I'm rooting for I'm voting for top five montages in a movie. Well, I was going to think if we're doing top five remakes that are better than the original, mm -hmm. why don't we do top five remakes that were worse than the original? Let's do that. Let's do that. I can do that there next week. Top All five right. worst remakes. When I was looking at these, there was a lot bigger. Oh, there was a lot. <laughs> There's worse. a bigger list of the failures than it was. Uh, better. What's the one? Uh, not Murder Ball, but uh, what's the other one with uh, Death I... Race? Death no. Race 2000. Death Race was fun. Well, uh, Death Race 2000 was was much better. That had Sylvester <laughs> Stallone, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. They were taking out like pedestrians. Murder Ball or whatever. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's a futuristic not game, yeah. which is like hockey lacrosse. God, something. that was awful. Uh, okay, so top five remakes better than the original. Morris, you go and, first. And then we can follow oh. that up with top five remakes we would like to see. I like it. I like it. And then we're good for the month and we'll go on vacation. That's 
we're, we haven't missed an episode in 75 weeks. <laughs> which is pretty impressive. Uh, uh, Jeff, you go first. I gotta get my number five, my list out here. But you go guest. ahead. That's right. You're the guest. You're the movie aficionado. My number five. I, I there was a comprehensive list on on Wikipedia of all the the movies that have ever been remade, Ooh. and I could only find find ten where the remake was better than the original, in my opinion. Okay. So my top five. Number five was The Man Who Knew Too Much by Alfred Hitchcock. He remade a movie called The Man Who Knew Too Much by Alfred Hitchcock. With so Bill he Murray? Remade, he remade Wait a minute, hold on. So the movie with Bill Murray? There's no. Didn't he do Man Who Knew Too Much? That was Man Who Knew Too Little. That was The Man Who Knew Too Little. Oh, that was, that's a different one. <laughs> that was a funny was movie. Confused. That was a funny movie. Time out, I got something in my eye. <laughs> when they're shooting at him, but Hitchcock sorry, remade Jeff, his own mo- his own movie because it wasn't good enough the first yes. time, and he made it better. George Lucas tried that; he just kept adding CGI to his films, though <laughs> he didn't remake them. And Han Solo shot first. No, he didn't. He did not. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's actually pretty interesting. How many directors actually get to remake their own movie? That's true. That is true. Is, is that the only one? That's Alfred? the only one that I saw on, on that comprehensive list on Wikipedia. It's interesting. Okay, uh, so you did that. Uh, Blake, what's your number five? <sighs> I have a tie. Oh, shocking! <laughs> shocking! <laughs> no, these are movie remakes of movies that were actually animated. Okay. So I'm throwing them all together. It's actually not a tie. It's all one lump sum. Uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. <sighs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go mm-hmm. ahead. I yeah. actually did watch the yeah. Hobbit cartoon in school, I think, in yeah. junior high. Those were not on my comprehensive list. Thank you. But I think you're I think you're right. I think those are better than the cartoons. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was deep. Okay. You yeah, don't have anyone to well, help you with that. Boom. Everybody's like, yeah, how can you argue with that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the cartoons were fine. They were okay. Uh, I used to love them when I was kids. Yeah. You can't argue that the, fine, the but Peter the movie Jackson masterpieces are better. In not better. Yeah. Okay, uh, and, and, you know, I'm just trying to fill some space here, or we can pause recording because Jason's still running his down. No, I got mine. Oh, number five. Now. Okay, number good. five. I had them ran down. Oh, I just you had had order. Them. You found them. Uh, number five, uh, True Grit, the new ver- newer version recently, much better than the old one. Uh, and my thing was, I had based, to see- more based on the novel. Yes, and I thought uh, the girl was very good in it in the yes. newer one. Uh, I had to do it because I had to. I had to make sure that I saw the original one, obviously, because mm-hmm. I think it's unfair if you're just like, "Oh yeah, that does look better than the oh, original." Oh, well, let me tell you, soldier. Anything with John Wayne sucks. I can't stand John Wayne. John Wayne, American icon. Yeah, when he played Genghis Khan, that was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so True Grit is my number five. Really I, liked it. I love westerns. So I agree. With it. True Grit. That was I, actually I uh, my number two. You can was put it? it up on the board? Yep. Put on the board. Uh, my number four, Jeff. You might know this one. 1978, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's my number one. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, that was on my honorable mention list. Yes. Uh, Donald that Sutherland. So much better than the than the original and better than the, the remake. Oh that was after. yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that was bad. I had to make sure I got the right year because I knew that I've seen the other one and I was like, oh, I can't make sure it's not that one. <laughs> yeah. So, very well done. Uh, they didn't take it as goofy as the first one. It uh, was so much better than the first one. So, yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. <laughs> I like the Invasion of Body Snatchers plot anyway, yeah. so. That was me reenacting the Sutherland part where he's pointing at the guy with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> And every time you Google that, that's the that's the picture they show. It's yeah. Sutherland with ah, ah. Don't believe it. That's my number one. Yeah, but I took out number two and a number one by five and four. Yeah, you did. Look at that. Right, time for us to go home. Oh, it's over. Uh, Blake, what's your number four? My number four. I've seen the 1950s or the black and white one. You know, with the guy's little head on the fly going, help me, help me. But the remake is a hell of a lot better. The Fly. Oh, I hated that one. My Jeff Goldblum. Cronenberg. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 no, 
Yeah, oh, Jeff Goldblum. I mean, yeah, it was awesome, wasn't it? It's spectacular. It was great. That's why it's your number two. Well, oh, it's so much better than the original. It is. Uh, that's that was my my reason for putting those one and two because they were that much better than the original. Yes. It's like they took the idea from the original and they just did they, a better they were just job with it. Able to to take it to a new level. Yeah. Uh, so what's your number four? My number four is Cape Fear. Yes, oh, that's easy. lots, yes, popular on a lot of lists. I saw. Is that his last good one, De Niro? Oh, De Niro. Are you yeah. talking to me? You think that's his last good film? Um, I'm having trouble coming up with a list of De Niro films like that occurred after that, but I'm sure Angel Heart more. Angel Where Heart plays Lewis Cipher. <laughs> Hiring uh, the main character to go on his uh, detective hunt. I remember Angel Heart. Mm-hmm. Was that De Niro? Yeah. It was De Niro with the boiled oh, egg. Okay. The boiled yeah, egg yeah. scene. Okay. I was thinking the, bread, the main guy. The boiled egg to the soul. Wasn't the main guy. And he consumes the egg. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So that was your number four. What's your number three? And my number three and my last one because I <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. I really like the remake of Ocean's Eleven. You know, I thought about that one. And I saw the original on AMC, I think it was, uh, when the the remake came out. It's not good. I mean, I'm not a big Sinatra fan to begin with, and so I was like, "Uh, Ocean's Eleven's good. That's probably a good honorable mention for me. Okay, I like that. And Soderbergh's a great director. Mm, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Um... So uh, yeah, you're done after that. Wow! Uh, thanks, Boris, for coming along on the come on the show. Two and number one. This might be the quickest top five ever. Could be. Uh, Blake, what's your number three? My number three. Uh, I picked it because I liked it an awful lot, but I didn't know it was a remake at the time. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's The Departed. Based yeah, I never off, saw the first of the original affairs. I never saw it. Mm-hmm. Supposedly it was a remake, and I really enjoyed it. Okay. okay. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. You're going to take it. It's mine. Taking it. I, I made it. I did my think own. it was a little long. The remake. I thought the this one was a little long with Leonardo. Mm-hmm. Thought it dragged for a little bit, but it was still good. It was still very good. good. Uh, Jack Nicholson was crazy. Yeah. So it was always good. Um, Marky num- Mark had Marky Mark in it. It did have Marky yeah. Mark, and the, not the Funky Bunch though. No, I need money. You yeah. mm-hmm. too many Irish people. <laughs> it was made in Boston. <laughs> uh, number three. I might get smacked for this one. Count Amante Cristo. Oh, God. Jim Caviezel. I that was, love that movie. That really? better than the original. The original's awful. <laughs> oh, my God. I had to sit through the original in English class in high school, and I was like, oh. The new one, though, with, uh, well, not new, it was the 90s, with Jim Caviezel, that was awesome. Why, and Luis Guzman. He an action hero? He was an action hero. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Uh, if you have not seen Kyle Mally Cristo, please go look at it. I, uh, like I wish Jeff Christos. now were here to smack you. He would smack me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> it's a little bit of jam, raspberry jelly. Uh, number two? Deep fried powder sugar. You can smack me on this one. Go ahead. Is it Spielberg? Dot of the Dead. Oh, <laughs> no. And the new one. Oh, Zombie no. Baby. Zombie Baby. Oh. Dot of the Dead, the original one. I hate it. That would be on my list of worst remakes. Oh. Wasn't it the one where they're stuck in the mall? Yes, yes. Okay. The sequel was awesome. Oh, that's horrible. They took out Jay Leno as a zombie. But they were fast zombies. You hate fast zombies. I know, but it was a like good it. movie. The, <laughs> was the opening not. was awesome with the residential and she's okay, in the, it. The opening scene was awesome, but it all went downhill. Zombie there. baby. That's all you need to know. She gave birth to a zombie yeah, baby. And regardless, it didn't hold a candle to the original. The original was overrated. I know. Uh, I like the original. Oh, geez. That's where they, they uh, hold themselves up in the house. No, that's no, no. That's not a Living Dead. I agree oh, with that. Not a Living yeah. Dead. Okay, Dawn of the I'm Dead sorry. was. Dawn uh, of the Dead. They hold themselves up in a mall. Well, yeah, no, in a mall. Themselves up in a mall. Not yeah, a Living Dead. Was good. Yeah, pie fight. That pie was fight. awful. During the zombie. I think apocalypse. I watched that with Jeff now, and we were just like, "Why does Morris like this movie so much?" It's... And Jeff's like, "We just gotta get it to the get it to the uh, pie fight." Nope, it was still awful. <laughs> uh, and we did that, get a lot. This one of the two asshole security guards, right? Uh, the Dawn of the Dead security guards. In I the don't mall. remember no, the mall cops. No, no that's Paul Blart. No, I'm not, no, <laughs> no, I'm, 
All right, I'm thinking. I'm confusing my you zombie movies. You know what? Paul Blart might go. Paul Blart three might be Paul zombies. Paul Blart zombie mob. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, attack of the zombie mob. The sequel to Dawn of the the original Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, is where they teach a zombie to love. Yes, yes. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> what Which about Land of the Dead? Good. Do you remember that one? That I, was not good. It, 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 that yeah. was not good. Which is the one where they're in the uh, military facility? That's Day of the Dead. That's Day yeah. of the Dead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we did get a lot of comments last week. Uh, quick thing about well, hold on. Jim yeah, and Jeff. I my number well, time, one. I know, time, Jim and Jeff sounded alike from a lot of people on uh, on. They thought that Jim and Jeff now both sound identical. Did you yeah. think that? I, did, I don't. I never. I yeah. see them almost every week, and I never noticed that. Well, they, have, they have a lot of the same voice inflection. Okay. Okay. Just a different pitch. Oh. Okay. Well. You know. It's basically just Jeff on two tracks. We had him go back and read. Yeah, we did. We did have all him. All the lines. That's why he's not here. He's too exhausted That's from right, last cause, week. Because we got that trick I, inspired by the uh, Beatles Fest in Louisville. <sighs> here we go, Beatles. It's all the musical tracks. I'm waiting for Bon Jovi Fest. Uh, but Jeff, you like my great big reveal yeah. that it was actually Jeff. Yes, I did like that. I, didn't wish, I wish you have, didn't tell everybody on Facebook. <laughs> I bad idea of the podcast. Uh, what's your number two, Blake? Or wait, what my was number two number was two? true green. Yeah, what was number one? My number one. What was your number two? Oh, yeah, we have done, number, uh, two? number two was Dawn of the Dead. Oh, okay. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Okay. Three All was right. Count My Crystal. Because we can't count. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a sandwich for number three. Yes. Uh, Jeff uh, Morris is out for number two and one. So thanks, Sport. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> like how we took like, yours out instantly. Uh, I got sniped in the first. You game. did. <laughs> well, I liked my remake sequentially. Okay. You know, I liked the uh, 1988 Batman. Oh, you're taking remake, that as a remake of a 1966 as a Batman? Remake of the 1966 <laughs> Batman. Wow. But then I love Batman Begins even better as wow. a remake of Batman from '88 and Batman from. So you're doing Batman? Okay. I never so thought that's about my those. One. Never thought about those that's as a right. remake. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know if Batman. We've talked about. It. I don't know if the Batman from the Michael Keaton holds up that well. The second one doesn't. The first one does. You I think? think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Penguins I, with rockets on their back just does not. doesn't hold up. And Jim Carrey as the Riddler. But Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman character was really good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Morris is out. Uh, my number one is uh, 310 to Yuma. Uh, the new one, uh, Christian Bale. Really loved it. I love westerns and uh, loved 310 to Yuma. So. I never saw the original. The original one was okay. I didn't I hate the original. Seen either. But the, the new one was a lot better. I thought the uh, Christian Bale's uh, ex partner, the bad guy, the, becomes the main bad guy, a lot better. In it. Or Christian, uh, Russell Crowe's partner, sorry. Russell Crowe's the bad guy in it originally. Um, I thought his partner uh, was a lot better in the new one. And uh, just overall, I really love 310 to Yuma. So that is my favorite. Uh, remake. You know, so. ones I would love to see that. Don't I've do always, that because that's the top five. I've always read about them. No, this is the good remakes. So oh. I'd say. I've always read. I've always read about them, and people talk about. It, I say, oh my gosh, it's so great! And I don't. I've only seen one of them in parts, but uh, the original uh, uh, Seven Samurai. Yeah. And then okay. remade by the Magnificent Seven. Mm-hmm. Which one did you see? Neither. You haven't seen either. Okay. I've seen parts of Magnificent Seven though. I think. I want to say I've seen the Magnificent Seven. I don't know if I can rem- if I have though. I may have just seen it on TV mm. bits and pieces. There, there's one scene from Seven Samurai that 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 I remember. Like I've seen it like probably five or six times. But the one scene I remember is there's a samurai guy who's doing a practice samurai fight with a, other with another guy, and they're using wooden swords. So they both swing at each other at the same time and and. The guy's like, well, I hit you first. And he's like, no, you didn't. Uh, the, the badass guy's like, no, you didn't. And he's like, yeah, I did. And then they're going to get in a big fight. And he's like, well, let's use real swords. So they use real swords. The guy cuts them in half before he even gets close to him. And the same, it's like so fast and so like right there. Yeah. Like the entire fight is just one slash of the sword. And, and it's so close together that it's that's. It's got like Indiana Jones out. shooting the swordsman. Like, that's it? That's the but, whole fight? <laughs> but, they're, but, they're, but all of them are like. Badasses in their own ways. Like there's the samurai sword guy who just. <laughs> Did you like, yeah. see the Magnificent Seven? The remake? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's good. But, but not, not on your top good. five. But not, not as, as good. Five, no, it was not as good as. Uh, uh, Se- Seven Samurai. samurai. So it's not a remake. Better. Was it as good as Dawn of the Dead remake? <laughs> uh, I knew as soon as I was writing that down, I was like, Jeff's going to kill me. Morris is going to kill me on this one. Uh, yeah. I had a uh, ransom. 
Uh, the Mel Gibson one I liked. It does not hold up too well. Uh, but I've seen the original. Uh, I got I saw that a couple years ago on one of the one of the Turner uh, TCM or whatever Turner Classic Movies channel. The original was okay. It's not bad. But the new one I thought was better, but I was like, I don't know if the Mel Gibson, Gary Sinise one really is that great of a film. So I also had the Hills Have Eyes 2006. That was an honorable mention. That okay. was actually... Oh, yeah. Nobody had the movie. thing. I, I thought somebody would have the thing. I thought about the thing. John I thought Carpenter's. about it, but I never saw the original thing, though. Uh, um, yeah, I had Hills Have Eyes, though. So 2006. Unfaithful. Um, the, the remake with... Uh, Diane Lane. Diane Lane. Yes. Well, it was actually better that... I never saw the original. It was a French film. Oh, okay. Which wasn't bad, but I, I really like the, the um, that one. Willard, the new Willard with... Uh, I thought about Willard. I thought about that, that one. Kristen, uh, Crispin Glover. Yeah, that was much better than the original. <laughs> That's not saying much. <laughs> um, and The Crazies. Oh, the, I never saw the original though. It was George the, Ro- oh, the yeah, original yeah. was George Romero. It was and it's Romero. Not nearly as, really? Yeah, it's not oh. nearly as good as the remake. Is George Romero? Yeah. I didn't know that. I like I'm the new sure one. We might want to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it was. We but don't I, really bad fact check here, so it's okay. And uh, those were my ten. Scarface. I never saw the original. I never saw the original, but. Supposedly Scarface was a remake. Uh, we did get a couple from fans. Oh, you got any more, Blake? Uh, I'm looking at my notes real quick. Uh, Airplane was supposedly a remake. Yeah, they said that. I don't know if that was, they said it was a remake. And then the one article I saw was like it was a take on all the 1970s movies. So uh, Airplane movies. So I was like, probably is that rolled, a spoof? Probably took both of them and rolled them in. Yeah. You know, uh, one of my favorite movies... That I didn't know was a remake, but I never saw the original. Uh, no Way Out was supposed to be a remake. Oh, the, ri- the Kevin remake Costner. was. Yeah. yeah. That was a hell of a limo Russian, scene. Yeah, the spy. She was not wearing a seatbelt in that one. No. No, <laughs> she was not. No, she was not. Sean, uh, what's her name? Sean Penn. Or, not Sean yeah, Penn. Sean Penn. <laughs> Sean Penn and Kevin Costner yeah, making out. Sean, Sean Young. <laughs> Before right. Sean Young, Sean Young went crazy and yes. started wearing a Catwoman outfit everywhere. Exactly. Uh, Bobby H. on Twitter at BobHolt58 had a uh, top five. Uh, he tried to stay away from adaptions of foreign films like Let Me In and The Departed. Uh, he had uh, he had transplants of stories like Yobium to Fistful of Dollars and Seven Samurai to Magnificent uh, Seven. So here we go. Top five. Cape Fear. Uh, True Grit. Uh, yep. Scarface. Uh, the Thing. And Ocean's Eleven. Uh, <laughs> so pretty much everything we saw, uh, we talked about. Uh, he did honorable mentions, Evil Dead, Fright Night. The new one I heard was really good with Colin Farrell. I didn't see it. I heard it was really good. I like uh, the old original. Fright from 1980s. Night. Yeah. And Count of Monte Cristo. So in oh, your face, Morris. That, that was the one that Jeff now would hate more than I. Yeah. <laughs> but at least Dawn of the Dead wasn't on there. Hind uh, we did Jim Now, who was questionable. He may have showed up tonight, but he did not. Um, let's see. Let's see what we got for him. Uh, let's see. Oh, Top yeah. five. Hmm, let me think. Jim Now is supposed to show up as well. But Jeff is sick. <laughs> hmm. He make it. Hmm. Incest. Anyways, uh, top five remakes. Oh, it's escalated quick. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's not what I was inferring. Yeah. I was inferring that maybe Jim's just a figment of imagination. Oh! I was thinking the other one. I got that. Not Incest! <laughs> I don't think that's a rim job. <laughs> Nobody wants a rim job from Incest. <sighs> if only we could put that on the title. <laughs> Incest exclamation point. No, no. I don't know if iTunes will let us put that up. Uh, Jim put, he texted me, uh, Red Dawn, Bedazzled. Red Dawn? Psycho. That's next week's top five. <laughs> Bad <laughs> News Bears and Ty. Time I'll, Machine and Rollerball. And then he the, goes, that's wait, top five that's a bottom week. five. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he just filled out my top five for next week. What's the point going on? <laughs> Let's see. Anyways, uh, number five for his top five is I Am Legend. He said he liked the new one better. Uh, taking I didn't a, realize that was a remake. There was yeah. a remake? That was uh, John Wayne, I think, was in the original. Oh, uh, I may tell you. Was it John Wayne? Uh, look it up. I think it was uh, John Wayne. He was by himself. I have no idea. It was, uh, no, it was Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. That's what it was. Damn the Omega Man. The it was the remake of The Omega Man. Oh. 
Really? Uh, yeah. It is? I think so. I'm going to check that out. Uh, number four, taking up Pelham, Pelham uh, 1, 2, 3. I never saw the remake. Pelham 1, 2, 3? Yeah. Uh, number three was Cape Fear. Cape Fear. Number two, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. And number one, 310 to Yuma. <laughs> so very similar. Uh, uh, he said, I actually saw the first ones of these. Good remakes, honorable mentions, were The Departed, No yeah. Way Out, and Dirty Round and Scoundrels, which I thought about. I read about it. I, ne- I don't think I've ever seen the original, the, the whole I, thing of the original. Supposedly it was, yeah. And he said Heat and A Fistful of Dollars. A Fistful so. of Dollars was on a lot of lists. Yeah, he said Psycho was not on the top five no. with Vince Vaughn. Heat, that was, a re- that was a remake of a foreign film, wasn't it? I guess it was. I think it was. Okay. so. Uh, but I hadn't seen it. There's yeah. your top five. And, uh, called, you know, that was a uh, handful of euros. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, this full of dollars was Yojimbo, which was actually I thought was better than. Blake made a joke, and Morris got him right there. No, no it's man. actually this. Fuck you. Oh, hey, here you go. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Musings of a Geek podcast at Musings Podcast said Ocean's Eleven was his favorite, and uh, we did get something from last week. Top five fight scenes was our top five last week. Uh, Doug, number one fan, can't give yourself a nickname. Favorite site fight scene was the one where IG-88 got thrown down a chasm between the patio steps. I may have done that as a kid to my older brother, or my older brother, Mark. What I took his, uh... that from? Nothing. There is no movie. Uh, I oh, took his, you guys. Yeah, I took his there Star Wars figure and uh, threw it down the steps when I was like three. So, we <laughs> talked about this before, that, you know, when my parents died, we're just going to chisel away the patio steps in the back and try to find the IG-88. It's <laughs> in so this little small crack, and I see it straight down. It's got to be down there. Was that the robot bounty yes, hunter? Yes, the robot bounty the really hunter. The tall, thin, skinny one? When my son was watching Empire Strikes that. Back, I kept thinking, oh, I know that guy. Every time <laughs> I, I see it. And I did I buy it for my older way. brother for Christmas, the, re- <laughs> the newer version of him one year. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so, uh, Morris, thanks for coming on. Uh, you were obviously the better chef this week. So, yeah. uh, if you would like to pr- plug your bo- book again, come on, do you remember it now? Zombies? Zombies, the true story of the Titanic disaster. You can get that on Amazon. So. Uh, yep. And I was under the impression that the reason I was coming on the show was to review Zombievers. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Zombievers. Oh, Zombievers. We talked about that last week. What no, is your you're, review? You're, I thought you were going to come next week with your brother, Jim Morris. <laughs> and the two of you were going to review that. Jim, in quotations. I actually wrote a, a review of that, and it's on the Musings of a Geek Podcast Network.com. Uh, <laughs> so, what did you up. think? I gave it a B. I gave it a B for a B movie. I said it was enjoyable. Beavers. Uh, B and for, for beavers. beavers. I never thought of that. Uh, it, what was yours? It, I thought it was enjoyable. It was. It didn't go too long, which is good. It was, Hour and sixteen it was very minutes. Short, and it was a. And they didn't. They didn't give it depth, and I'm not sure if that's good or bad. It was, was kind of campy. I, yeah, it was very campy. Had chicks in bikinis and toplessness. So boobs. Yep. All right. Uh, bad special effects. Awesome. Yes, which made it great. Uh, my thought was that I don't know. I kind of was upset it didn't go longer than an hour and sixteen minutes, but I'm also kind of glad it didn't. <laughs> so I'm kind of caught well, in there. Had it gone longer, they would have like it. It felt kind of like an Evil Dead type of thing, mm-hmm. except for with bad zombievers. <laughs> zombievers. Okay. But I think my favorite part parts were the. Were uh, John John Mayer? Yes, John Mayer and Bill Burr as yeah. bikers, as the truckers. I, I think that opening scene was great dialogue. Gave I a guy a hand job once. What? <laughs> no, no, I I dated a guy. Oh, I once. dated a guy. That's what it was. I dated a guy. <laughs> everything was good except for the sex. I mean, everything was fine except for the sex. That was awkward. <laughs> His body was a wonderland. Well, that's we, right. <laughs> Well, we hang out. All, <laughs> we hang out all the time. Uh, it was a one-time thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the one guy. What was it? The outtakes. I gave a guy a hand job in an Arby's rest, restroom. <laughs> it's the one outtake. Uh, and the person that we did not think was going to survive did survive in the movie. Well, yeah. until the end. Yeah. Until the very end. How did the beavers become zombies? Bill Burr and John Mayer were driving a. T- whoa, 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 whoa. How, how would you guess? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they were truck. Toxic waste. Toxic oh. waste fell off of a truck and into the... Almost like a true Romero plot. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and it was also from the producers of American Pie. So, just to let you know. And there was a couple other movies that he, they did, but... So, Tara Reid did not make a cameo? She was not in it. She was not in All it. Right. 
So I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun I, movie I, to watch. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. And even Jeff now really liked it. it. It could have been a lot deeper. There could have been more character development. It could have been a, a fuller feeling movie. Mm-hmm. So it's not something that I'd watch again, but I'm glad that I watched it. Oh, I think it. I would watch it again. Well, if some friends wanted to watch it, I'd watch it again. <laughs> but I wouldn't like sit down and like, what am I going to... I could watch Zombievers again. I could L- watch Let me just explain again. this. So when I was typing out, it was typing this review for musingsofgeek.com, I was like, I cannot believe I'm actually typing up this review of a movie called Zombievers and actually putting thought into my review. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I give it a B. What would you give it? Tough call. Um... Maybe a B minus, okay, C plus. Okay. I was debating between a B minus and a B. I was being generous at the end, but I really liked it. I thought the John Mayer, uh, Bill Burr parts were the best. I, I thought those were great. It was a fun movie to watch. Yes, but... you have to watch it with a party, with a group. But I couldn't really like put it on a pedestal next to any favorite movie that I probably had. better than Dawn of the Dead, the original. I hate you. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bad idea number 358 hiding from zombie beavers in a wooden cabin don't do that they can shoot through that <laughs> so uh, Roger says goodbye goodbye from walking dead to talking heads from comic books to TV sets there's a history not so bad there's the history it's the history of bad so bad the history of bad it's bad the history of bad I You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends.